Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Oh, yeah. Zarina Chess. Uh, I am still using they, them pronouns. The he, him is to troll Matt Walsh supporters. Um, and it has been working because they just immediately assume that they, they immediately assume your birth sex based on what pronouns you have in their bio, um, which is very funny to me. Persephone Pacheria, thank you very much for resubscribing for five months in a row. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I've been a sub for five months, JK. I've always been a sub. I appreciate it. Um, Austin St. Clair, thank you. Goodness gracious for super chatting $20. I really, really appreciate it right now, especially as we are getting closer to rent. Uh -huh. Just one second. My dog decided to come up right now and start putting her her uh, thing in my lap the her the ball that she plays with oh okay oh no soda account he him is just on twitter for the mount walsh do we want to let's go over really quick the 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 event of my day um, ooh, and I'm, I'm rolling the dice here, so let me actually... Mm, put that down, stop it. No, let's, no, let's not, let's not do that. Let's go, nope. Ah, uh, heck. All right, we're just gonna go to profile. Whew. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dark Knight, for gifting a sub to Tyrosine87. I appreciate it. Um, but yes, if if you follow me on Twitter, you may have noticed. Um, I have gained like two thousand followers today, and part of that is because I've been let's let's call it networking. Uh, but also because Matt Walsh, which like I I tweeted this, you'll notice 27 minutes, that was this morning, and then it was nine hours, like overnight had passed, and I had tweeted this. Um and I woke up and it had been literally like 20 minutes after he had he had retweeted it. And it was the first thing I saw when I woke up. And I was like, well, I know what I'm gonna do. And I changed my name. And as as of now, I think he's still... hasn't deleted it or noticed. Uh, which is very funny that he has now retweeted a message saying he defends pedophiles. Mind you, did not... The original tweet was about him basically... Yeah, here we go. Him basically running interference for uh, anti-Semites. He did not engage with that at all. Like, he just straight up didn't... Went to pronouns and bio as an evasive tactic. Um, very funny that he retweeted this to, what was it, 2.7 million of his followers? <laughs> yeah, so it's been, my my notifications have been full all day because his, uh, his tweet is, I wanna say it's up to like 2K likes, I should have just looked at it, but mine is up to 41K, which I believe is, I, I think that's a ratio, I don't know, I, I've never really done a ratio before, I don't, I don't make a habit of it, so. Um, yeah, that's been, that's been a fun little, uh, development for my day. <clears throat> and I am sorry if I am sniffly. I am still 
for some reason, I am still sick. Which is why you may have noticed I haven't been um, streaming as much this week. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> An angry goose. You're fine, angry goose. You're, you're actually only five minutes uh, late because I just started. Uh, Erica Rice, thank you for super chatting. Five dollars. Erica Crew going hard. We appreciate it. Um. Yeah, I've been the the reason that I haven't Vorap, Thank you for following. The reason that I haven't been um, streaming is that I've still, against all odds, I've still been sick, and I don't know how or why at this point, because I'm. Here's the thing. Oh, Necro S six sixty six. Thank you for four ninety nine. Uh, excited for the stream. Pronouns and bio. Also, who do you main in Vampire Savior slash Dark Shockers three? Morgan. It's always Morgan. Which I realize Morgan isn't exactly top tier. I can play a little bit of uh, Anacharis. Anacharis. I always said Anacharis, but I've heard people say it Anacharis. Um, I I fuck with Anacharis uh, quite a bit. And like my my backups are gonna be either him or probably uh, probably Bishamon in the background. I like Talbane for for like just button mashing, but yeah, I do banana brains. I got a case of long CPAC. No, Amber Westcott Baker. It's not it's not uh, COVID because here's the thing. I don't have any of the other symptoms I had of when I when I got COVID like a year or two ago. I had headaches, fever, muscle pains, like the whole thing. Um, this is just congestion. Like it is just a cold that won't go away. <laughs> um, Siggy, dead domain, which donate gives you a better cut? Super Chat or Streamlabs? Um, Ko-Fi is, is my answer to that. Uh, but I, I actually, I think they give about the same cut, honestly. It just, it depends on when I get paid out because one's Twitch, one's YouTube. But like, they, they, they even out roughly the same. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day, low resolution. Uh, Mr. Cookie, 0510, thank you for super chatting $10. Hope you having a great day. I am, I'm having an okay day. I have my, I have my Godzilla cup. We got, we got Godzilla cup in chat. That I'm staying hydrated with. Uh, Kawaii Kiwi, have you heard of genetically modified skeptic? I have heard of that. Um, anyone who owns evangelical hypocrites on the same level as you, if not more, it's him. Ooh, I will have to check him out then. <laughs> Ugh. John Bainbridge, it might be allergies. I've just like, it would it would have to be a noticeable step up from previous years. Now my cat is whining. Do you have food, honey? Do you need food? Are you a chubby little baby who needs food? Are you just a little baby who needs food? What? Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Show cat. I can't show cat. She's uh You maybe get another mod here in YouTube. Let me go see who's in YouTube real quick and I will mod somebody. Let's do. Have I played Skullgirls? I have played Skullgirls. Who else have I seen a lot of? Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, I am mute. I am mute. Do you want a mod? Or is oh wait no I am mute is over on Twitter or God on Twitch God never mind sorry I'm looking over on YouTube I'm getting my getting my lanes crossed uh, Banana Brain Z E F do you want a mod over on YouTube and yeah I know I have a spot on my forehead I'm I'm dealing with a a head injury Banana. Good morning, Tea with Goblins. It's been a minute since I see you. Saw you, I think. Okay, Banana Brains. I'm going to mod you. Okay. Okay. All right, Patrick. You have some backup. Cry and Pinata, thank you very much. And I am mute. Thank you for resubscribing for six months over on Twitch. Um, show your cat, please. I'm suffering from cat deficiency. Where is my chubby little baby? Come here. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get cat. Siggy, thank you for ten dollars. Goodness gracious, do you play Morgan and Darkstalkers? But do you play Marvel? And what's your team on that? If you do, it depends on the Marvel. Um, I don't. I've played a lot of Marvel 3. I'm garbage at that game. I'm even worse at 2, but I will fuck up some Marvel 1. Like, Marvel 1 is is my game in the Marvel series. And my my team there rotates between Morgan... Uh, <laughs> my team there rotates between pure nostalgia, because it was just the characters I played as a kid. So it's Morgan, uh, War Machine, and Venom are, like, my, my three go-tos there. But, like... In, in Marvel 3, I, I'll do, like, Morgan, Dante, Ghost Rider, or something. I, unfor here's, here's the reason why I was never good at fighting games. Is I cannot pick a character I don't find aesthetically cool. Which, in a game where the power that you have is based around a character's moveset. And sometimes I don't think those movesets, or I don't think those characters with the best moveset are as cool leads to like frustration it's like the same reason i had to stop playing um mortal kombat online is kind of, I, I can't fucking deal with Liu kang and sub-zeros anymore i just can't <sighs> all righty i will be right back i'm gonna go get cat i'm gonna scoop her up Here is Cat. Say hello. Mwah. Hi, Bubba. She's so tiny. Yeah, hello, my loves. Hello, my loves. You want to come up? Lady is not happy about missing out on. She's like, pick me up, pick me up. I love you, Bubba. You're just a big dog. You are, you're just a big dog. Do not growl at me. Okie dokie. And she's gone. Be nice to miss, be nice to the cat. Butthead. Whoa. Hey, okay. Okay, dog has been put in prison. 
Uh, no, Banana Brains, I do not do... Somebody did ask if I do debates. I don't really do debates. Um, I don't really find debates super productive. <coughs> hey. That is enough. <coughs> I do not like this. Dog. Stop. <coughs> okay, give me a second. Okay, ha! Ah, we're done. Goodness gracious. Um, Moody, have you ever looked into atheists or pagan creators? I follow some pagan creators on YouTube. Oh, real pumpkin Jay, poor babies. <laughs> Jason, thank you very much for twenty dollars for cat and dog treats. Uh, Miss Jackie, thank you for super chatting five dollars. You're such an amazing journalist. Also, your secret Trump bus messages made my whole life. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hive Sai, thank you for resubscribing for six months in a row. <laughs> oh my god. Um, who are some good pagan creators? There's I'm gonna sound like such an asshole. Um I'm trying to think of their name. I think they use they pronouns, but they are a witchy creator. And I watched them. I found them a couple years ago. Oh, they have a really cute name too. It, mm, they're a redhead. I can't remember it right now. <laughs> Is she a puppy? She thinks she's a puppy. No, it's not nicotine. Um, okay, dokie, let's get right into it. We've been yapping for a little bit here. <coughs> Nicholas Valentine, I'm nearly 66, British and gender fluid. I don't normally have heroes, but you're one of my true inspiration. Oh, thank you very much, Nicholas. I appreciate that. Tea with Goblins, thank you for using 100 biddies. I recommend Dr. Angela Puka. She runs a channel called Angela's Symposium. She's an academic specializing in the history of witchcraft. Witchcraft, that is super cool. I will have to check her out. Uh, I love good history stuff. Me. Why is Twitch sending me a message? Okay, somebody went live. Cool. All right. So today, I wanted to go over maybe one of the goofiest stories. Like, it's one of those things that you see and you're like, of course it happens. Of, co of course this, this happens. Um, but it doesn't make it any less galling and on a certain level for the, especially if you've already seen the project 2025 breakdown, if you were part of that stream or you saw that video up on the channel, or if you watched the CPAC videos, you know, or you should have a good idea of by now, the extent to which Christian nationalism is playing into the right wing of this election. And if those haven't informed you, I feel like if you've been on Twitter in the last week or so, and you've seen the Christ is King discourse, which has been bonkers to watch pop off, people literally coming together to defend anti-Semitism, seeing Jeremy Boring say that he tunes in to Nick fucking Fuentes and thinks he's a good speaker, like, the way, the way conservative the conservative right space is fracturing right now will determine 
so much about the future of spaces like Twitter. Um, and unfortunately, I think it is going to edge towards open bigotry and anti-Semitism. That being said, Christian nationalism plays such a big part in the ongoing culture war. Uh, and if you've if you've been on Twitter in the last couple of years, you have probably noticed Twitter. Twitter is just the place I I am the most, and also where people feel most comfortable expressing their political ideologies um, in in explicit terms. The thing is, yeah, Patrick Dune, Jeremy Boring being a Nick Fuentes fan is crazy, even for someone as awful as him. I it like it really is. It really is. Um, yeah, it's just fucking bonkers, man. It's so bonkers. Uh, but anyway. So, Trump being in just 10 bajillion different lawsuits and needing to raise all kinds of money has finally done the thing that I'm honestly surprised it took him this long to come around to doing. And he is selling a Trump bibble. This is from, uh, if you don't follow Hemet Meta, he, he does a lot of really good work over on Twitter and has this blog that keeps tabs on a lot of fundamentalist religious stuff. Um, and he, he I, I found Hemet through doing, um, oh shit, my, uh, my shadow is running, weird. Um, I found Hemet through doing my, uh, what's the word I was looking for? My NIFB investigations. Um, Luna Rose 161 on YouTube. Do you think they're going to continue going more and more masks off? I have they crossed the point of no return? Genuine question. Yes. I I mean, like, I don't I don't know what you define as a point of no return, but I think conservatives in America have gone mask off in a way that the movement hasn't in a mainstream way before. Because there there have always been these, and I I showed it in my uh my documentary investigating just the history of anti-Semitism is that conservatives have always had this undercurrent of, of bigotry and racism and anti-Semitism, but it has never been so explicit and pronounced and proudly stated by major voices in the movement. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's rough stuff. Misanthropic. Meatwad says, this is a Trump bubble. Um. Oh, God. Well, I mean, like, Des, people have asked Trump about the Bible before, and he'll just be like, yeah, you know, my favorite, oh gosh, my, what was, what was that, that infamous quote people were like, um, no, what, what's your favorite Bible verse? And he, he was like, two Corinthians. Yeah, two Corinthians. That's the whole, that's the whole ball game right there. And it's like, what evangelical or Catholic or any shade of Christian calls it two Corinthians? Two Corinthians. I think it, I think it was Corinthians. I might. I hope I'm remembering that right. Um. But on Friendly Atheist, Hammett Meta's blog. In a predictable attempt to make more money from his conservative base, Donald Trump is now selling copies of the Bible just in time for Easter. But as with all things Trump, there's nothing original about this product. He's just putting his branding on it, hoping that his endorsement leads to more sales. And here's here's the crazy part is what's included in this because this is essentially the Christian nationalist Bible. It is, and, and you saw this attitude that is getting proliferated in conservative spaces. You saw it a lot at CPAC where like when I would draw attention to, um, like at the, the $500 dinner I went to at CPAC, where they would open with three songs. And the songs were 
the um, the national anthem, which it totally makes sense. You know, they open ball games with the national anthem, no problem with that. But then you go from the national anthem to uh, how great is our God, and it's like this kind of top forty Christian radio hits version of it, and it's like. Okay, so we're we're literally combining church and state here. We are literally national anthem, Christian music, and then they follow that up with Natasha Owens' song "Trump Won and You Know It." So, it, like, it it that was such a perfect microcosm of how they are trying to combine all of these elements um, of culture into into one through line. And this, so here's the the like the more bonkers part. It, it's not so much that Trump is selling it, and it, it is like the quote unquote Trump Bible. It's the God Bless the USA Bible includes the King James Version texts along with the text of the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the quote handwritten chorus of Lee Greenwood's famous song God Bless the USA. And here, like, it really is the canonizing in the conservative mind, the canonizing of these things, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, and that fucking Lee Greenwood song as being, like, like when you are putting it in the Bible, when you are putting it in the same cover, the same pages that you claim are divinely inspired, that you claim as an evangelical or as a Christian, like the the whole thing with the Bible and how people can have so much faith in it is that you believe it is the word of God. You believe it is inspired by God. The whole verse, holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Like that is that is about the writing of the Bible. So when you are putting a Lee Greenwood song in that cover, you are saying, whether on purpose or inadvertently, that you think things like the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, Pledge of Allegiance, are inspired by God. That the people who wrote them are as on, on par with ancient prophets. It, it is... Things like this that give us the basis of people going on stage at CPAC, like I showed in the video, and essentially saying, uh, God gave us the right to own guns. It is so... Nothing to see here. Who's nothing to see here? What? There's no integrity here. to bear cheeseburgers uh thank you very much rt rg tail splash uh tea with goblins thank you for using 135 biddies and on the third day the stone barring the door of mar-a-lago Mar was rolled aside and the tomb opened and the people beheld that it was empty save for the many many boxes of state secrets and the disciples of the orange lord did wail and weep the fbi has been corrupted by the deep state and the mango messiah said unto them said Amen. Thank you very much, Tea with Goblins. Um, and yeah, the, Hemet points out here, it's a Christian nationalist wet dream. Trump advertised the $60 plus shipping book this morning on his social network, though the video was posted over the weekend on Greenwood's Rumble page. And that's, that's bonkers to me. Does anybody remember, do you guys remember the Trump NFTs? Like I know, I know the the NFT craze went away real quick. Oh man! Okay, Angry Goose, we gotta look up the Trump NFTs. Let me see if I can. Oh no! Mm 
Let me see if I can find the the trailer, cause that the oh, where's that trailer? Yeah, no. Uh, B. Parker pointing out that you can get Bibles for free. A lot of people have Bibles for free. All right, let's do Trump. FTs. Oh, no, I, I want the full thing. I want the trailer. Because they everybody's gonna cut it off, but you need to see the full, the full trailer. It's, it's really, it's something. It's, all right, let me see if the Yahoo Finance has it. The crypto collapse does not appear to be worrying one major celebrity. Former President Donald Trump launching his own NFT collapse. No, I need, I need the full, the full thing. Cause it's 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 one of the worst things I've ever seen. Um, like it's it's unbelievably shitty looking. Oh wait, is this it? Hello everyone, this is Donald Trump. Yep. Hopefully your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington, with an important announcement to make. I'm doing my first. Oh God, why are you not? It's so tiny. I'm sorry, everybody. It's so tiny. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Official Donald J. Trump NFT collection right here and right now. They're called Trump Digital Trading Cards. These cards feature some of the really incredible artwork pertaining to my life and my career. It's been very exciting. You can collect your Trump Digital Cards just like a baseball card or other collectibles. Here's one of the best parts. Each card comes with an automatic chance to win amazing prizes like dinner with me. I don't know if that's an amazing prize, but it's what we have. Or golf with you and a group of your friends at one of my beautiful golf courses, and they are beautiful. I'm also doing Zoom calls, a one-on-one -on -one meeting, autographing memorabilia, and so much more. We're doing a lot. My official <laughs> Trump digital trading cards are 99. Oh my God. $99 for a like shitty AI generated. Okay. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Okie dokie. You're okay, puppy. She was mad that I left her in the kitchen while I stepped out for a second. She's like, how dare you leave me? I'm sorry, was dog was dog crying the whole time? Dog domain. Oh, I think that's his actual signature. All right, let's let's finish watching this because it's like everything about the production of this 
from dog you are being ridiculous everything about the production of this from the like the shitty ai art to the photoshopped in trump to just like 99 dollars per one it's so it's so like it's $1, such a grip doesn't sound like very much for what you're getting buy one and you will join a very exclusive community it's my community and i think it's something you're going to like and you're going to like it a lot they also make perfect gifts so you can buy them with your credit card or crypt like look at this shit look at this shit it i can't <sighs> All you need is an email address. Go to collecttrumpcards.com and buy your Trump digital trading cards right now before they are all gone and they will be gone. This is. I love how, even though he's very clearly reading from a script because he knows fuck all about like NFTs and technology, probably. Um, it's so funny how he can't stop adding in Trumpisms. Like, he can't stop adding little addendums to every sentence where he's like, before they're gone, and they will be gone, they will be gone. It's like, and you get a chance to, to join my community, and it's a good community, it's the best community. It's it's the best community you can find. Like, it's so, it's, this is it's so my fucking first funny. official Trump trading card NFT collection, and you get a chance to meet me. Go to collecttrumpcards.com right now, and remember, Christmas is coming, and this makes a great Christmas gift. <laughs> how many, how many people do you think, how many people do you think, goodness gracious, dog, doggo. I love you. You can't bother me. I love you. Booger dog. I just took her for a walk too. She just played with friends at the park. Um, oh my God, Kieran Dave, thank you so much. Kieran Dave super chatted two hundred dollars. Your CPAC series was excellent and deserves more, but please accept this for now. That is that is so generous of you. Thank you. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Um, Brian Winterheart, thank you for following, and Alex Taylor, thank you for subbing. My goodness, thank you so much, Kieran Dave. Um, it's just like. Who, who do you think got a Trump NFT? Like, real talk. Who do you think on Christmas got a Trump NFT? And their parents were like, it, it was expensive. It was like $100. Ugh. Um, Lane Kaplan. Oh, my God. Uh, why is Lady so sad today? Lady's not sad. I just put her in the kitchen for a little timeout because she was being sassy. Um, I think what happened is I just... So I walked her and took her to the dog park where she played with some friends right before I got on stream. So I think she's still a little bit wound up and just needed a timeout. And then I had to go run something out to somebody um, out in the hallway really quick. And she did not like being left alone. <laughs> I, yeah, like, I would renounce Christmas right there if somebody got me this. But, like, I, I wanted to show this before we watch the Trump Bibble uh, trailer, I guess. God bless the USA Bible. It's like all the, all the production and stuff on these are so cheap because it's, it's so clear that he's just sanding somewhere in Mar-a-Lago and they just put a camera on him for 20 seconds and he just does one take. Like, I can't, I can't believe... Like, the grift is so unbelievably real. So unbelievably real. Like, how, 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 how do you fall for this? Oh, okay, let's see this. I'm proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood. Who doesn't love his song, God Bless the USA, in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our Founding Father documents. Yes, the Const- He looks... awful. I don't- I- 
I think it's part, like, he he's looking very old, and you have to remember, he is eight years and one presidency, almost a decade. I mean, he's, I mean, he's more than eight years since, uh, 20, yeah, no, eight years and one presidency, which presidencies take a toll on you. Like, I don't know if people, people don't remember uh, Obama leaving the White House and like his head, his hair was just all gray. Like that, that shit takes a toll on you. Um, but he looks, I, I, you know what I think it is? I think this scene is lit like a Disney Plus show. Like whatever lighting they have going on here, it just looks like one of those Disney Plus shows. You feel me? Where it's just like dark and dingy in a way. My favorite part of him is the side of his face near his ears where the bronzer fades or just didn't reach. Yeah. It's it's always very funny. Maybe he'll die soon. <laughs> Institution, which I'm fighting oh. for every single day very hard to keep Americans don't protected. don't do that don't zoom in like that that's that looks even worse protected also the a jump Bill scare of rights, the Declaration of Independence and the Pledge of Allegiance are all part of this God bless the USA Bible and it's just very important and very important to me I want to have a lot of people have it you have to have it for your heart for your soul he can't, like, he is just so, he is unable to just read a script. He has to, like, ad lib and just ramble. Many of you have never read them and don't know the liberties and rights you have as Americans and how you are being threatened to lose those rights. It's happening all the time. It's a very sad thing that's going on in our country, but we're going to get it turned around. Religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. And I like, again, the grift, like religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. You say as a presidential candidate who is selling a Bible with founding documents in it. Like religion and Christianity are not missing from the country at all. I was, I was just talking to somebody the other day and I think I posted it on Twitter my this has been a thing in my local theater is like two years ago because I, I go to AMC theaters all the time I have one that is like a 10 minute walk from my place excuse me sorry a uh, 10 minute walk from my place and I have AMC subs so I go see movies all the time and when there's nothing else I want to see in theaters I love to go see foreign movies and last not last year year before last I was on a spate of seeing like a Bollywood movie every week. And I can only go to one week because they're like three and a half hours long and they have a lot of musical numbers, but it was great. There were good ones. There were fucking really bad ones. Uh, but like it was, it, I, I love partaking in, in different things in foreign movies. And this year, thus far, there have been almost no foreign movies coming to my theater. You know what there have been for the last two months, almost concurrently? Multiple. Why turn off the music? Is the music distracting? I like the music. Why why turn off the music? Uh Leo Fee. Why turn off the music? Hmm, okay. Well, I'm, I'll turn it off for a little bit. Um, Leo Fee asking, how much does a movie ticket cost? It depends. Like I said, I have AMC Stubbs, which is like $30 a month. And like a movie ticket, it depends on what you get. But like if you do a matinee, regular screening, it's like 10 bucks. Um, if you do like IMAX or something, it can go up to 18. So AMC Stubbs is kind of a no-brainer because you get to see three movies a week. Uh, 
And as somebody who likes to see a lot of movies, I like to just keep a fresh palette of media diet and always seeing new things and taking in new inspiration. That really works for me as because I can just walk downtown. But while there haven't been any foreign films recently, there have been not one, not two, not three. At some point, there was four theaters being taken out by multiple showings of four different faith films, one of which was a documentary about traveling to Israel, one of which was The Chosen. It was like the first three episodes of the new series played on a big screen. One of them was Cabrini, and the other one was Invisible Angels, something Angels. And like, there was there was a time... <laughs> Okay, I think, unfortunately, D. Lolly, I think we're getting, you're getting overruled on the music. Everybody else seems to be wanting the vibes. Um, the, like, like, and you know what I didn't get at AMC? Here's the thing. I was looking for so long because I was like, okay, I'm going to keep my eyes out. I really want to go see this. End of Evangelion. I didn't realize when it was playing because it didn't come to my theater at all. And I was just seeing like friends and stuff on Twitter talk about going to see it in theaters. And I was like, I want, I want to go see End of Evangelion in theaters. Fuck yeah. It wasn't playing. The same time it came out, four Christian movies were in theaters. Like... The idea that Christianity doesn't have a deeply ingrained stranglehold on American society at any level is ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, so that is my, yeah, seal 0626. I almost all, I would say most of us are neurodivergent in this, in this chat. So yeah, like I like, and that, that is, that's just one example. And that is somewhat anecdotal. But I think it really does speak to, and I, I don't know how profitable those movies are. I have seen in my local theater, um, I have seen groups of people come in before for like faith movies. I remember what it was. Was it, might have been Nefarious? Or maybe it was Sound of Freedom. Because I saw Sound of Freedom in that theater. Might have been, it was either Nefarious or Sound of Freedom because it was last year and I saw like one of the, a church group come in to see it. Um, but it's like, like you, you can't, I, I can't look at something like that and be like, oh yeah, Christians are oppressed in our society. It's like, no, I would like, no, what? Anyway, sorry. Truly believe that we need to bring them back and we have to bring them back fast. I think it's one of the biggest problems we have. That's why our country is going haywire. We've lost religion in our country. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people. I doubt it. Uh, I, I would love to hear him quote one verse, just, just like literally just one verbatim from the King James Version. Um, and you know, you know, he picked the King James version because that is, that's the one all the radical fundies like love. Uh, I think I even saw something on one of the Reddit fundy snark boards that, um, somebody was asking like, you, you know, like without even seeing it, you know what translation he picked. You know what translation he picked. It's like, yeah, it's, it's going to be the, the crazy radical one. Yeah, also, saying that every American should have one is, like, it's such a... Like, I know what he's getting at, but, like, out of context, it's such a sinister assertion to make. 
And it, it, it's just another one of those things that it just feels, it feels gross. It feels bad. Um, yeah. Ooh, speaking of goats, I just, I was just looking at Lamb Chop on the screen and I was reminded, I may have some good news about merch soon, everybody. So stay tuned. I'll probably be showing um, something off. If I can do a stream, I probably won't do a stream tomorrow, but maybe Sunday or Monday. We'll see. If, if I get it in the mail. I, I ordered the things that I would be making um, to make sure that they are good and of good quality before um, I, I start advertising it to everybody else. But anyway. People's favorite book. This Bible is a reminder that the biggest thing we have to bring back America and to make America great again is our religion. Religion is so important, it's so missing, but it's gonna come back and it's gonna come back strong just like our country is gonna come back strong. In the end, we do not answer to bureaucrats in Washington, we answer to God in heaven. Christians are under siege. We must protect content that is pro-God. We love God and we have to protect anything that is pro-God. We must defend God in the public square and not allow the media or the left-wing groups to silence, censor, or discriminate against us. What? Okay, let's, uh, Donnie, let's take that one more time. Let's, from, from the top, let's do one more reading. What was that? Silence, censor, or discriminate against okay, groups to let's, silence, censor. Uno mas, uno mas. Let's roll it back. You gotta enunciate, tip of the tongue, teeth, and the lips the left-wing groups to silence, censor, or discriminate against us. Censor. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what? Carolyn Storstrand, sorry, Storstrand. Um, thank you very much for 499. Discovered you last week with your CPAC vid and was blown away by your vid on anti-Semitism. Love what you're doing. Would give you 50 if I wasn't broke. I appreciate, don't, don't feel I never want anybody to feel any kind of pressure to give if you're unable to or if you're in any kind of uh, harsh financial situation. I I appreciate everything everybody has done for me and I appreciate, um, especially if you wanna go, if anybody wants to go give something for um, Patreon because I get paid from Patreon in a day or two, um, but do, do not feel any kind of uh, do not feel any kind of obligation to give if if it would put you in a worse financial situation. Uh, Nightmare Taco, thank you very much for gifting a tier one sub to Phoenix Core. We'll be again a great nation. Our founding fathers did a tremendous thing when they built America on Judeo-Christian values. Now that foundation is under attack, perhaps as never before. What can we do? Stand up, speak out, and pray that God... Wow, he is... This is just so phoned in. Like, like even the pacing on this feels off. Like, what can we do? Stand up, speak out, da 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 da, da. Like, you're, you're supposed to, you know, add inflection. You're supposed to add emphasis. It would be like, now, what can we do? Stand up speak out like do but it's he's just rushing through this god it's it's the half acidness that really gets me like it, it pisses me off for all of the old people and all of the just the people who have been suckered into this movement and the people who sincerely believe that this man gives a fuck about them like it is it makes me mad to see how blatantly he just does not give a shit about any of this will bless America again. No, really, somebody, uh, Banana Brains, the way he's holding the Bible is so inauthentic. He's holding it like a, like a late night infomercial. Like he's holding it like a, like a can of Fleck feel or something, you know? Octodragon898, thank you very much for following I'm the Drudge I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Pray, get educated, get motivated, and stand with me and the legions of Americans asking God to bless our great nation, to bring our great nation back. And here, here we have it again. Like, as as Trump would say, this is the whole ball game. 
literally saying, stand with me, stand with me, trying to bring religion back to our government, tying in, putting on an equal playing field. Trump, the Bible, and the United States government in just one sickening melange. And to make America great again, I'm proud to partner with Lee in this offering. He's a very special man, both as a talent, but maybe even more so as a human being. He's very, very special. And I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now and help spread our Christian values with others. There you have it. Let's make America pray again. God bless you and God bless the USA. Embarrassing. It's his favorite book, he says, even though when he was asked in 2015 to share his favorite verse, he couldn't think of a single one. When that was followed up with a question about whether he prefers the Old or New Testament, Trump responded, probably equal. Anyway, it's not clear what Trump's personal involvement is here or how much of a cut he gets for every copy sold, but it's a perfect opportunity to remind conservative Christian voters that their faith and his politics are intertwined. See, Hemet gets it. I haven't, I haven't read this before. Um, he's quite literally pandering to Christians, selling them something they already own and could easily get for free at a time when he's desperate for cash. And that's, that is probably the big part. It's like $60 for a Bible. Like, you can buy some nice Bibles. You know, you can buy some Bibles that have like nice gold trimmed paper. If you have, uh, if you have ever been confirmed, if you were raised Christian and you went through confirmation, you probably got a nice Bible, which had your name uh, on the front and all that stuff. But like, sixty dollars to specifically get the Bioshock Infinite Bible, <laughs> to specifically get the one that is like, yes, the Founding Fathers uh, are basically prophets, is wild. For something that, mind you, Bibles are handed out for free all the fucking time. When I was going to college, people would just come and hand out Bibles for free. Like, bonkers, bonkers to me. Lesbian, uh, my pronouns are they, them. Thank you for asking though. Do, do, do. The backstory behind this book may be even more interesting than Trump's personal involvement. Oh, lay it on me, Hammett. Um, yeah, hotels have free Bibles. Just steal one from a hotel. I, I don't remember the last time I was in a hotel, uh, honestly. So that, I've, I haven't been to a hotel in years and years. So it's not something that everybody's gonna be able to do, like just go out and do, but you find yourself in a hotel. Uh, this supposedly patriotic Bible was first advertised in 2021, slated for publication on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Cringe. It was $50 at the time. I guess Trump's endorsement jacked up the price. But when it was initially announced, there was serious pushback in Christian circles. Smart. That's because the NIV translation used in that particular Bible meant it presumably had a stamp of approval from Zondervan, one of the largest Christian book publishers in the world. One petition made the concerns explicit. Quote, this is a toxic mix that will exacerbate the challenges to American evangelicism, adding fuel to the Christian nationalism and anti-Muslim sentiments found in many segments of the evangelical church. That petition called for Zondervan slash HarperCollins to cease publication. A handful of popular progressive Christians, some of whom had written books for the same publisher, also denounced the project. Saying, quote, American nationalism is its own civil religion. That's a good way to put it, actually. Um, where America, rather than Jesus, is the center of attention. Oh, fuck, that's a good way to put it. Instead of Jesus and the church being the light of the world and the hope for humanity, America becomes the messianic force in the world. It has its own theology, Manifest Destiny, the Doctrine of Discovery, and American Exceptionalism. And this is precisely why it is dangerous to mesh patriotism with Orthodox Christian faith. After all, the Bible does not say, God bless America. It says, God so loved the world. The national anthem should not be in the church hymnal, and the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States should not be in the Bible. Boom. Owned. We don't need to add anything to the Bible. We just need to live out what it already says. I mean, I don't know about that. Uh, Icky the Beepy 
Is that is that, are you cousin of Ivy the Kiwi? That's that's a deep Nintendo DS cut for all my gamers out there. Um, has tipped three dollars. Thank you. I can think of no scum sucking creature as godless as Donald Trump. The fact that anyone would follow her this means that no actual conceivable god would approve of this sheer insanity. I mean, like here here's the real like crazy thing, and I was just thinking about this the other day. The, the the right wing conservative party, the evangelical fringe, the, the ones who will go in my mentions and call me like a demon and stuff like that, they are so convinced with finding conspiracies. Like you saw it with the, the bridge collapse earlier this week, where people just immediately jumped on the conspiracy angle. And they are so consumed with finding conspiracies, which th with things that are quote unquote hidden in plain sight, with the symbols that are right in front of our eyes, and you know the the demonic forces of the world they're taunting us, and oh, can't you see how Obama is actually in league with Satan or whatever? And they they will come up with Bible verses to talk about the end days. They'll talk about you know uh, how the devil will deceive you, and they'll he'll act you know good and all that stuff. But nobody ever stops to think that maybe the devil would actually be on their side. Because like, if you, were, if you were to line up, who better fits descriptions of the Antichrist in the Bible between Obama and Trump? Willing to bet Trump would probably, uh, probably take that one. Who's, who's gone from the chat? Like, it, it is... It's... I understand having faith, and I don't, I don't have a problem with people of faith, of really any religion. It's when you have faith to the point of blindness to anything that might counter it, because then... You are just, you know, there, there's a there's a great quote, and I, I say it in my, my Wolfenstein video essay, um, which if you haven't checked that out, please, everybody go check out my video essay on Wolfenstein. Um, but there's a great quote in the first Wolfen, modern Wolfenstein game where um, Set Roth is talking to BJ about faith and religion, and BJ, they're, they're basically in a concentration camp, and BJ is asking him, how can you have faith? Like, how, how can you believe in God with a world like this? And Set basically tells him that, like, well, I mean, you can have faith, but you can also have room to doubt. Because if you don't have doubt, all you have is something, something, something ferocious conviction. And the, the point of the statement is, is that you either have, you can be a person of faith, but when you get to the point of not doubting anything, then it stops being faith and it starts being conviction. And that is what the Nazis in the game have. Uh, and it's such a great illustration of the dichotomy between somebody of faith and somebody who might have quote unquote faith in their ideals, but are ultimately just driven by self-assuredness. They, they aren't driven by the same kind of belief. Um, and I, I think I think that's... Uh, I, I messed up that quote, so go go watch the video to uh, to get the full one. But it's it's the same... Like, it's, it's the same basic idea. Back to the article. At a time when many Christians were still coming to terms with Christian nationalism, this was an explicit attempt to merge church and state in a way that many made many Christians uncomfortable. Uh... Incredibly, the pushback had an effect. Harper Collins, along with its Christian imprint Zondervan and Thomas Nelson, said they would not be publishing the book at all. In fact, they said they never even finalized a contract. The project was announced prematurely. But now that the book is back, it's been resurrected, and this time it's using the non-trademarked King James Version text with Trump's stamp of approval. Yes, this is the only Bible endorsed by President Trump, says the website's FAQ. The publishers also make this clear. This is the KJV... Uh, translation and quote we do not offer additional translations at this time oh and the pages might be sticky because why not at the oh good god this is from the actual website hi coda anthony
Uh, leftist Lego, Lego Yoda. Hey, Domain, do you keep up with Star Wars? There's a lot of discourse about upcoming TV show that I'd love to see you talk about. Racism, queerphobia, bigotry. I've So here's the thing. Uh, I have been on the periphery of the ongoing like Gamergate slash sweet baby culture war, um, mostly because I can't stop dunking on nerds on Twitter. So because of that, I continue to see those same dorks and their shitty dumb takes uh, perpetuated on my feed all the time. Like because I dunked on Melanie Mack the other day, uh, which I, look, owning somebody on Twitter is not like a big task and especially a troglodyte like Melanie Mack. But I trounced her so bad she literally stopped replying. Um, so that was that was very funny for me. But the thing with Acolyte is that, A, I'm a couple Star Wars shows behind. I still haven't seen Ahsoka. I do want to. Um, but I haven't seen Ahsoka and I haven't seen um, Season 3 of Mando. Um, I saw Andor last year. That, was, that kicked ass. Um, Acolyte looks cool. I'm, I'm glad that they're filming it on actual sets and stuff. Like, I think it already, in the trailer, it looks better. It has a, a better tangible look to it. I think that was the best stuff in, uh, their past shows, like Obi-Wan, uh, was that, like, kind of coruscant back alley planet that he goes to second. Like, that was, that's good stuff. Almost everything in there. They had a whole sequence where uh, Leia was running through. And I only know this so well because I, I watched that, the Obi-Wan show. I, I went through the Obi-Wan show like seven times when I was making the video of it. Um, the movie of it. I, I For those who don't know, I've talked about this before, but I'm sure there are people who don't know. I edited the Disney Plus Obi-Wan show into a feature-length film um, and cut out about four hours of it. But um, there's a lot of, like, good, like, practical effects stuff in there, and I, I appreciate that. The stuff around queerphobia, I'm assuming that comes down to Abigail Thorne. I would expect no different. Um, the stuff around it being, like, woman-focused and having a more diverse cast, I'm not surprised. Like, it's, it's the same... I, like, it's it's the same insecurities that are undergirding every other aspect of, like, the Sweet Baby Inc. drama, the Gamergate shit, everything the quartering does. It is just like, oh, this doesn't directly appeal to me all the time. So what? Like, I don't care. Yeah, Leo Fee, uh, some of Andor was shot in London. That's why it feels so oppressive and real. It was also, they actually built that, like the the prison set uh i remember seeing an interview with um andy circus talking about how cold it was because they're all walking around uh barefoot on this like giant metal panopticon basically uh and, like i love that shit that's good stuff yeah sophie tf hyrule i am low-key incredibly uh jealous of abigail and i'm hoping i am hoping that i can have a fraction of her success at one point because I have so many um, projects I would love to work on and create one day. Um, let's go. Trans identities have been real ever since the fallen angel and Aphrodite curse. Stuff's being trans from a mysticism standpoint is a curse. It's not evil. We live as women men to survive due to this curse. I can... I could see that, I suppose. I do pretty much anything Abigail told me to. Uh, yeah. I like Abigail quite a bit. Elo Brando. Are incels worse than due to think they're chicks? I say toss up. Lot to unpack there, buddy. Kawaii Kiwi. I hate when gamers make this argument about female leads. No, I had somebody, uh, what, what, they quote tweeted me saying I hated strong female leads because I was dunking on that dork, uh, manga lawyer who keeps, like, who has made Cellar Blade his entire personality, which, like, for his sake alone, I hope Stellar Blade fucking whips because I think he might legitimately just die of disappointment. I have I have never been so hyped for a video game as that man is. Like, ever. 
Like, not even... I'm talking not even Metal Gear Solid Five. Like, that man is is going in in a way that is just, quite frankly, not healthy. Um, but somebody... I was, I was dunking on him, and somebody quote-tweeted me to say, uh, I hated strong female leads. And the four they chose, they quote-tweeted me saying, I hated these characters, which is ridiculous, because it was... It was 2B from Nier. It was uh, Samus from Metroid Dread. I mean, like, from Metroid, but it, the, the picture was from Metroid Dread. And it was Bayo. It was the, the cover of Bayonetta 2. And then I don't remember who the last one was. I don't think it was Stellar, but it was, it was, it was a hot video game lady. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't recognize her <laughs> off the top of my head. But it's like... I don't have a problem. I... I've beaten Nier Automata on both Xbox and PlayStation. I have all the achievements on both platforms. And I told, I retweeted, I told them this. Like, I have every, any platform Bayonetta has ever been put on, I own it there. Like, I own every Senran Kagura game. Well, except for, like, the last couple. Last two. I was really into Senran Kagura when I was younger, but now it feels weird. Um, who is saying... Do, do, do. I also I still haven't played Bayonetta 3 though. So like ah they got me on that one. Oh, but somebody's saying why are they going so hard for Stellar Blade? Um literally just because they think it's an anti-woke game. Like like the lead designers apparently put the wanted a horny video game character so he made the lady look like she's almost naked all the time and that is apparently enough for the like None of the talk about Stellar Blade I've seen has been about the mechanics, the graphics, the gameplay, the pre- Like, it's all about the fact that the main character just has her tits and ass out. And it's like, you could, you could just go watch porn. You could just go do other things. Like, who cares? Yeah, it's the same Crocker Gambles. It's the same reason they were hyping up Sydney Sweeney. It's like, who, what? There, there is no... It, it goes into this other... And I, I feel like these two kind of schisms are tied together. The schism between... Um, like, the current schism happening between the anti-Semitic religious right and the pro-Israel religious right that you're seeing play out with uh, Candace Owens, who just got kicked off Daily Wire for being anti-Semitic. Um... It's, it, there are these big issues bubbling to the surface in the conservative movement, and one of them is sex positivity or sex negativity, because so many right-wingers and so many, uh, even, even not necessarily, like people would call themselves centrists, more or less, have spent so long trying to convince themselves or, or spreading the idea that because some liberal had a TED talk somewhere at one point that all liberals hate big titties. <laughs> like, they they truly believe that because 10 years ago, some people were like, ah, Nita Sarkeesian has a point sometimes, that everybody on the left hates sexualized anything. And it's like, that's, it's, it's just not true. It's just not true. Um... And so it's very funny to see these these two sides like trying to reckon with each other because they can't decide if like like which is true that the left hates sexuality or that the left is a bunch of porn brained sexual deviants like because it you you it can't be both and I understand that that's the fascist thing to you know depict somebody as both weaker and stronger at the same time but it's like like can you make up your mind? Women pretty. So true, Lauren Alexander. That is true. Like, there are a lot of... I I am dating a leftist with big old boobs. Like... 
happens. Um, yes, they kicked Candace off the show. For for those who don't know, Candace Owens, uh, right wing extraordinaire. Let me see if I can find a good summation of what happened. Crocter Gambles bragging. Me bragging about my big titty goth girlfriend. I would never. I would never do that. Um, do, do, do. Feud with Ben Shapiro. Let's do. Let's see if I can get more news. Media struggles to handle the extreme right. Uh. At the Daily Wire, mainstreaming election denial is hardly a firing offense, but over the past months, Owens has outed herself as an anti-Semite, recently liking a social media post claiming that a prominent rabbi was, quote, drunk on Christian blood, which is ancient, ancient, that's, that's, like, you gotta be, that's old school shit. You gotta be crazy to be on blood libel in the year 2024. Eventually, this became too much for the Shapiro-pounded website. Last week, CEO Jeremy Boring announced that Owens and the site, quote, have ended their relationship. In both cases, the media organization has received significant blowback. Uh, they were talking about Ron and McDaniel. Republican sources are threatening to cut off NBC journalists in retaliation for McDaniel's de defenestration. Right-wing trolls, led by Hitler-admiring self-described incel Nick Fuentes, have led a campaign of anti-Semitic social media incitement against the Daily Wire in support of Owens. Objectively, this is all absurd. No news organization should have to face consequences for taking a stand against anti-democratic lies or bigotry. Um... But yeah, I mean, that's... The... This seems like a good... <sighs> the best and smartest conservative writers by contract reject election denial and oppose Trump's racial demagoguery, but doing so puts them at odds with where the actual existing Republican Party is. By publishing them as spokespeople for conservatism, you risk misleading your readers about the true nature of the American right. That's true. Joseph Weber, if you drink blood, you will get hemochromatosis, too much iron. Man, but I'd love to have two different colored eyes. Um... Leo V, I understood that reference. Um, Renaru, that's the joke. That's the joke. Boo. Uh, yeah, Nick Fuentes has defended Candace Owens. Wait, does it say that on here? Yeah, Nick did come out in support of her because Nick will Nick will come out in support of literally anybody who hates Jewish people. And Candace Owens has been on a big anti-Semitism kick lately. Um, but I wanted to go and check out. Let me go look at. This little bit um, and the other funny part is that now conservative so much of conservative media are mad at daily wire um like if, if you go into even the video or the the tweet that matt wall shared my when matt wall shared my tweet if you go into the comments there are still so many people there who are like oh here we go um, Matt, why didn't you stick up for Candace? Why didn't you uh, stop taking Jewish money? It's like in in Matt Walsh's comments, it's like holy shit! Like what, you've made this, you've made this bed. You got you got to sleep in it, dipshit. 
But uh, this is the other thing I wanted to talk about today. Because, um, yeah, Two-Face Place, it, 45, it isn't Matt Walsh or Petto. That's the rumor. And as we all know, from trusted source of Elon, Haya Rychik, uh that might as well be true then. And we can share it as truth. Definitely. That's definitely, definitely a true thing, so... Yeah, here, here's the, okay, here's the thing though. If you watch my, not that I gotta keep talking about watching my video, but if you go and watch the videos I did on Matt Walsh, where I dug through all of his backlog, it's not just, like people harp on the 15 year old thing where he says 15 and 16 year olds, that's like when they're at their most fertile and that's gross, but he has done worse shit when it comes to pedophilia. Like the time that he just, Hypostulate, like he was the, he was trying to make an argument about how uh, we have no morals without God. And the example he pulled out of thin air, the one that he chose to go with was, this is for, like what he said, what if we find, like what if you were walking along and you found a laptop with child porn? If there's no God, then how would, if you're not hurting anybody, how would it be wrong to look at it? That was an example that Matt Walsh came up with. Uh, aside from the fact that he also defended Josh Duggar and said that if he was Josh's father, he didn't know if he would go and talk to the police about what Josh did, which was sexually assaulting his children, by the way. In addition to downloading, and I, I feel the need to remind people of this with Josh Duggar, somebody who should definitely be just with hammers. Um, Josh Duggar, when he was taken into custody, the police found child abuse materials that experts, the, the criminologists, the people who work in cybercrime, thought were urban legends. Josh Duggar had materials of child abuse that were so heinous, so graphic and vile, that the people who hunted pedophiles online for a living thought they, they were so horrible they couldn't actually exist. That's who Matt Walsh decided to defend. Like, Matt Walsh knew that and made the conscious decision to defend that man saying oh we don't we don't know all the things and uh he he tried to make a whole thing about how the media was just going after josh duggar because the family was christian and that that comes back to matt walsh actually not giving a fuck about kids like when you when you get right down to it sorry i'm getting mad at this all over again i'm just like uh because there, there are times where, like, for the most part, people like Matt Walsh, you can just wave away their stupidity. You can just be like, you know, it's like, whatever. He's an idiot. He's reactive. He's going to say horrible shit because that's his brand. But when you actually look at the hypocrisy that he enables and who he comes to the defense of and the reprehensible shit they've done, like, he he causes tangible harm outside of outside of, like, my little bubble, outside of, like, trans people. Like, he causes actual harm with that shit. Um, and there was there was another one. Oh, yeah, the time where he basically... <laughs> because he's a hardcore Catholic and the Catholic Church can't do anything wrong, he basically said um, that the problem with Catholics molesting... With Catholic... Pri not Catholics. Catholic priests molesting um, children wasn't a endemic problem with the power structure of Catholicism that allows priests to do that and get away with it and just be moved and, and shuffled around and escape legal consequences. Matt Walsh doesn't think that was a problem. 
Matt Walsh thinks the real problem is gay people in the Catholic Church. Not pedophiles, gay people. Like, he's just, he is so... Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, Jodax, thank you, goodness gracious. Gifting a tier one sub to Cinegang Soup, MaxiPad, TwitchWitch83, Lumaru, and Cool Uncle Lumaru. Hello. Thank you very much for, for being here. I love, uh, love Lumaru. Um, yeah, like, like the, these are the logical circles that Matt Walsh works his way into. So when I say, like, when I go and Matt Walsh retweets me and I change my name to Matt Walsh defends pedophiles, I, I got the fucking receipts. If, if people want to come, like, Matt Walsh has a very odd and conspicuous history of aligning with sympathetic viewpoints and bringing up examples that are just like, they're so, why, why would you do that? Oh, God, I hate him. And it's, it's stuff like that that leads me to hate him. It's, it's not the stuff, it, you know, it's a lot like with higher regic. It's not that they uh, share, you know, trans stuff or they're, they're constantly trying to harass people or that, like all of that shit sucks, but it's the stuff that they are so ignorant and evil about their ignorance. Um, that it tangibly causes harm. All right, I will be right back. I need to go refill my water and then we will talk about uh, the the Crowder war that is unfolding right now between Pearl Davis and the quartering over this dude who left Steven Crowder's show because that shit has been even crazier. Okay. All right, here we go. Dominic Maslik, you should do it. You should absolutely ask out that cute boy you met at a queer meetup. Hello, dog. Hello, dog. Let me go. Can we go? Dog, you say hi? Come say hi on stream. Say hi to dog. She says, please throw a ball. Please, please, please throw the ball. Ah. 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 Hey, baby. Come up. There's a ball. Oh, Mwah. I go. Mwah. Mwah. Jordan wouldn't stop talking about their big city goth GF. I mean, it's not my fault. I have such hot partners. Not my fault. I'm a Riz master. Grab a snoot, give kiss. I want to meet... Renover, you got to go to a queer meetup. I want to meet a cute boy at a queer meetup. Yeah, here's the thing that's been pissing... Like, my dance card is full, so I, I don't need to... I don't need to meet anybody new. Like, between the people I'm in DMs with and my... Let's say two and a half partners at this point. Um, I am... I'm, I don't need to be meeting anybody, but like... 
grinder in my area has been such a nightmare lately. Like when you go to the twink section, it's literally three profiles and then you gotta pay for everything else. Bullshit, hate that. Misfit Satanus, thank you very much. I don't feel great. I have this nasty head thing I've been uh, nursing. Good idea, Lane Kaplan. Five inch platforms, hell yeah. Zora Bart, can you play trans people are my friend at least once? What is that? I do not know what that is. Johnny Viral, having a hard enough time finding cute folks as it is. You can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. Like, have, have no doubt about your own ability to find cute people. No! I am mute! My pizza order was just canceled. What the fuck? Uh, yes, Dark Star. I have a dog and a cat. Yeah, and honestly, Snail Girl, that's true, is that, like, I live in Spokane, so we have a... V let, let me tell everybody how small the queer community is in Spokane. My partner, one of my partners was out at the nearby club last Thursday um, to do karaoke. This is the nearby gay club. And... We went on a date, and she tells me, oh my gosh, guess who I saw at the club dancing and making out together. And I was like, who? And she was like, this person and this person. And they are both androgynous twinks that I've hooked up with in the past. Like that's how small the circle is here. Is that my hookups are hooking up. Like it is, it's it's so tiny here. Um. So like it, you, you unfortunately, a lot of people are bound to the areas they live. Ooh, pepperoni and olives would slay. Turtle boom, thank you very much for resubscribing for seven months. God, it's so crazy to me. It's so crazy to me that I've been doing this for seven months. Oh my God, awesome kid games. I just got a cute new puppy yesterday. Eight week old and purebred German Shepherd. I bet they have the biggest little pawsies and the biggest friggin' ears. I love that. Uh, Rowan Ash, Spokane is, it is a couple hundred thousand. Like it, it is a city. It's a very small city. <laughs> um, Pyrrhic Pax, I wish monogamy was more popular in the LGBT community. I don't like to share. You like you can find somebody like that. Like there, there are tons of people in the LGBTQ community who are totally fine with that too. Uh. Oh no, I didn't know about that, Noodles. That sucks. Confused Droomba, thank you very much for following. Dog, you're just, you're like... Just chewing her gross little ball like right into the mic. Hem hemlo, hemlo. She says hello. I am... Let's put dog on screen. Hello. She just comes up under my arm and does this. She's like, please, please take. Please take. I'm I'm going like please take. Take ball. Take take ball. Oh, you got crazy eyes. What if I do this? What if I do this? You're going to growl? You growl? Grrr. 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 Schnurf. <laughs> um... Found a transphobe YouTube channel. Ooh. All right, let's let's go check that out next. 
All right, and Neri SSBM and Space Bun Sarah, thank you very much for following. Confused, oh, Confused Roomba. Confused Roomba. I, I don't know why I said Confused Droomba. That's not even a word. Sorry, I'm just dumb. I just want somebody to love me the way a dog loves ball. Here's, here's the thing. My dog's in a polyamorous relationship with this ball because she will just find, like, randomly... Like she'll she'll be whining about something and I have no idea what it is and I literally she's actually very smart at leading me to things because I'll I'll be sitting I'll be playing you know Baldur's Gate or something and she'll be whining she'll come out to me on the couch and be like just sit there and look at me and be like oh and I'll be like what and then I'll get up and she will lead me make sure I'm following her she'll look behind her make sure I'm following and lead me into the bedroom and just basically like point with her nose to where her ball is that she can't reach like she is. She is so very smart, very goofy, very obsessed with different ball. Like, like even now, but she she rotates between them. Like even now, like in the time I've been here, she's come up to me with like three different balls. Like she just can't make up her mind. Hydrate. Wait. What's this about HRT, Nyari? What did Nyari say about HRT? Nyari, SSBM, I'm new baby trans. Nice to meet you. Love your YouTube. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, joining. <laughs> My dog will come to me. Leofi, Bali Amorous, very good John Bainbridge. A plus, you get a gold star. Um, Leo Fee, my dog will come to me mad that the cat has stolen her blanket again. My dog is a big pussy. Which is actually very funny because she is she's a pity lab mex. And so like she's not that big. Like she's she's a pretty small, medium-sized dog. Um But when she like on the street, sometimes old ladies and stuff will like shirk away from her, which is so fucking funny. It's so it's so funny because she is the babiest dog in the world. Um But sometimes she'll, like, bug the cat a little bit too much, and the cat will swat her. The cat will have claws out and just be like, whip, get her on her cheek or something, and the dog will yelp. Because the dog, the, my dog has never known a day of hardship in her life. And she will, like, last night, she was she was fucking with the cat, and I let I let my animals, like, they, they work it out amongst themselves. They love each other. They cuddle. Sometimes my dog plays too much. Um, and she was fucking with the cat too much. The cat swatted her and the dog didn't have any marks. She, she doesn't bleed or anything. Like she just got swatted and immediately my dog, this, she's like 40, 45 pounds. Like she's heavy. She, she has a lot of muscle. Um, and she just comes like with her ears back and comes without any sound, slowly saunters over onto the couch and just sits direct me in my lap like she's a puppy and just like sits there and like lays against my chest and like looks up at me with her ears back because she's like hurt <laughs> except she's she's not she didn't bleed she didn't like there's no marks or anything the cat just swatted at her and she's just a the biggest baby in the world um, DEI dog. Um, her feelings were hurt. That's the thing, Space Mentera. Like, she is, she's a very sweet dog. She's very, uh, she's got so much personality, if you guys couldn't tell by her constantly uh, engaging. Anyway, sorry. We are, um, we are way off topic. Irish DC 95 thank you for using 100 bits. Head pats for the goat. I'm giving I'm I'm giving the goat head pats right now. Um, leftist Yego, Lego Yoda. My first ever date happened two months ago, and I quite nearly died because of neurodivergent shit. To top it all off, the person came out as lesbian. I like all genders, but I can't pull it up, pull at all. It, it's something you learn. Like it, it's not an innate thing. Cipher, how long have you been on HRT? Um, that is a weird question. So I've been on HRT for. Th It'll be three years this May, I believe. But 
for the last essentially two years, I've been on such a low dose as to be almost irrelevant. Like I'm, I started off with one milligram orally for like the first six months. And then I was going two milligrams for about a year and a half after that. And then I've moved up where I'm at about four a day. And that's, that's actually something, but like every other trans person and trans girl I've talked to has told me that one and two milligrams are basically like literally nothing. They might as well be placebo. So kind of, I've been on HRT for like six months. <laughs> if in a way, in a weird way, um, but I'm also, I'm also on raloxifene, which is a, um, selective estrogen inhibitor to, um, to prevent breast growth, which it doesn't entirely work, but it, it does the job somewhat. Uh, yeah. Cause I, I do not, I do not want booba and some people do, and that's fine. That's just not, not what I want. And I might, if, if it grows much more, I may look into, um, keyhole surgery, which I've, I've been, uh, researching slightly to just remove excess breast tissue. Yes. Noodles. I'm non-binary. Oh God. I'm so stuffy. I'm so sorry, everybody. Uh, I had gynecomastia pre HRT boobs were never not an option. I mean, you can, you can get whatever you want. Like if you don't want boobs, you can just not have boobs. What's the drug called? Raloxifene. Um, A R A A R. R-A-L-O-X-I-F-E-N-E, -E, raloxifene. Um, and sh they'd have to ask their um, uh, their care provider about it. And here's, here's the thing. It's mostly used for menopause. Uh, and so its use in HRT is somewhat experimental. So odds are your care provider will be like, I don't know if it'll work. We can try it if you want, which is kind of what mine did. I, I have a super kick-ass care provider. Um, like I, I was very lucky pro tip. If you are having trouble, if you, if you like me, cause I, I don't have a insurance plan. I'm on state insurance. If you're like me and you have to go to smaller local clinics and you have to go to um, stuff that will take your insurance and you can't afford like great healthcare. Um, find a local planned parenthood if you can, because planned parenthood is so much better about gender affirming care than any of my other doctors I've ever had. Um, new player, how much does this cost? It, it depends. I don't pay anything. Cause right. I mean like right now, <laughs> The only gender care I get, first off, Washington covers most gender care, um, but the only gender care I get is estrogen. And those are like, those aren't expensive pills. It's estrogen and raloxifene. Neither of those are terribly prohibitively expensive. Uh, so the state just covers them. Um, yeah. Altered Rin, no, I'm not on T-Blockers. Why? Uh, Zoki has followed, thank you very much. Andrew Ricks, uh, Zerkite. Yeah, I'm not on, um, I'm, I'm only taking sublingual estrogen. No injections, no, uh, oh God, what are the other ones? The ones you take for your boobs and butt. I don't, I don't remember what they're called, but I am, I am only on little estrogen pills that I take twice a day.
yeah uh queer newt if you can if you can get a care provider to sign off that you are trans and have gender dysphoria which like the <laughs> my care provider at planned parenthood like sat down listened talked for several hours we did a consultation and she was like yeah you you match gender dysphoria um you're you're an adult you can do what you want progesterone that's the other one um do it ethereal idiot what are you doing You know, Planned Parenthood is is such a great medical organization, and it pisses me off how it gets it gets basically chalked up to only abortion. But like, it's it's not that at all. Like, there are so many things. Um, uh, Camino Reloxifene R A L O X F I N E. I will throw your ball. Dang it, dog. Progesterone. Progesterone is the butt one. Or is progesterone the the T blocker? I forget. Yeah, I like I said, I don't I don't take any T blockers. I don't take any progesterone. I don't take any uh finis finest finest finesterdol? Is that is that one? Did I just make that up? I don't remember. Spironolactone, that's the T blocker. Thank you. Finisteride. There you go. Miss Obscuria, what do you think of right-wing European politicians taking over MAGA speaking points? I think, so, and this is, as a lowly YouTube and Twitch streamer, um, I don't want to act like I'm a authority on international politics or anything, so much of this is my anecdotal knowledge, uh, the things I've looked into, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The way that i i feel like it's not just that maga okay what i think it is is that the same nationalists in europe and in south america have been looking for a way in for a very long time they have been looking for a way to mainstream their beliefs in a more socially acceptable way and trump has given a template for that that other people are now following. I, I don't necessarily think that like, oh, they, they look at Trump as an uh, aspirational figure outside of the power that he has gained through what can loosely be called his charisma? The queer newt. I don't know much about trans and non-binary medicine. What does T blocker mean? It means it blocks your testosterone output. So um, you have to go on T blockers if you want to do like bottom surgery, um, because it causes that area to what's the word I'm looking for? Um, atrophy. Um, so you you need like all of that stuff to shrink and get smaller. And if you don't have T going to it every day, that that's what happens. Um, so if you want to get bottom surgery, you need to be on T-blockers. A lot of people will do T-blockers because it changes muscle tone and muscle structure. Um, and stuff like that. Yeah, Leo Fee, I think that's a good way to, to put it. The far-right resurgence in Europe has been going on for a while. It was parallel with Trump, not a reaction. Okay, let's go into, finally, stop putting this off. <laughs> An angry goose, if you take testosterone and estrogen while also taking T-blockers and U-blockers, your nervous system takes a screenshot. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so much. It's very funny. I'm currently being legally abused and intimidated into silence by a former employer. This has been going on for a while now, and it simply cannot live in darkness for another day. Uh, but I am asking for your help to fight back. First, some context. Uh, in late October of 2023, to my surprise, I was served. 
Do we have any playback speed? We do have a change in playback speed. Let's go 1.5. These papers. A cease and desist from my former employer. It threatens severe legal action in the... I left the stove on. Thank you for tipping $3. Critical Drinker wrote a movie in the trailer for it. Looks like some Steven Skull tier trash. Ooh. Do we have a... Oh. Do we have a... Uh... Let me go look that up really quick. Get rid of that. No, thank you. No more. Oh, is this it? Rogue elements? Are you fucking kidding? Oh, that's going to be so bad. All right. I, I can't wait to look at that. Form of a lawsuit demanded. I cease communications with my friends. The scare tactics uh, of cease and desist are generally to intimidate, isolate, and eventually devastate. Uh, like most. What? What happened? Why? No. Death. There we go. I did not. In the same delivery, I was also served these papers. A Rule 202 petition from my uh, former employer. You can look that up on the internet. I know I had to. Um, these documents were filed with the county court of my former. Uh, place of employment, demanding that I be subject to an oral deposition under oath for an unlimited amount of time where they were free to interrogate me on pretty much any private matter that they chose. Also, in this petition for discovery, they demanded that I turn over documents uh, of all communications with more than a dozen of my friends, an unlimited amount of unnamed persons uh, in any form and over an unlimited period of time. I did not. Now, I did not for a few reasons. Uh, number one, I have seen how this employer handles legal issues, and I, I knew that once I opened the door to legal abuse, it would never, ever be shut. This is how they operate. In fact, um, I'm not the only one uh, who's a current victim. My former employer is exploiting the legal system uh, to abuse others right now, all in the darkness, fully knowing that the fear and risks it takes to speak up. Uh, this kind of harassment at the hands of the powerful isn't just designed to financially ruin somebody, it's designed to cripple their soul. I wasn't about to put uh, my family on a, embark upon a journey down that road. Number two, I was not about to allow the privacy of my personal life, the trust uh, I have with my friends and the real, real relationships I have with them to be violated in such an addictive, addictive and abusive manner. It simply was not gonna happen. Um, I received the latest article of legal harassment on Friday, March 22nd, 2024. After a month now of litigation exhausting. So this is somebody, for those who don't know, this is somebody who used to work with um, uh, Stephen Crowder and is now being sued by Stephen Crowder and is trying to come forward with allegations of abuse against Crowder. In the court with relentless amendments to the Rule 202 petition, my ex-employer was finally awarded their request for my oral deposition and any document of communication with my friends that they believe may provide any avenue to sue me or others. As it stands, uh, they await my forced cooperation. I will not. I will continue to... A bit fight. too fast? Okay, I'll, I'll now, turn it down. the big question is, what was their entire reason for this harassment and the basis for their claims? These documents. An NDA. Some more context. I signed this separation agreement an nda containing a strict and very broad non-disparagement clause many years ago uh, i voluntarily left my job after deciding i could no longer put myself or my growing family through the toxic and abusive work i can't i that's the highest i can put them up twitch or twitter doesn't have very loud this this platform that elon is trying to turn into a video fucking platform isn't very good for video if you would believe it um i apologize for it not being super loud environment i had endured for years um, this place was and is to this day a workplace rife with sexual misconduct uh, degeneracy and aggression the things i saw the things done to me and the things uh, i witnessed my employer do to others were disgusting shocking and utterly um, indefensible i have the receipts this all took a serious toll on my personal health to the point near the end of my tenure, the work environment had become so toxic that I had to be admitted into a heart hospital. And after many tests, I was ultimately put on anti-anxiety medication. This condition uh, was something new to me. I had no history of it prior to my employment there and have never been treated for it since. Now, when I decided to resign, my wife was pregnant with our firstborn child. It was a terrifying position to be put in, um, but I absolutely knew that I could not be the husband or dad I was called to be for them in my current state. 
something had to change. And if I couldn't change my work environment, then it was time for me to remove myself from it. I was fully aware that willfully resigning would mean I would forfeit any sort of severance. I trusted that God would provide. Um, what I had not anticipated was how much it would cost me to quit. This is where my first experience with legal abuse began. Uh, starting from the day I delivered my notice of resignation, I was put on the phone with company lawyers and the good cop, bad cop coercion campaign to get my signature on an NDA was well underway. I was told many lies throughout this process. I immediately hired my own. Uh, Banana Brains DEF, this is apparently not gay Jared, which I guess is what, I guess is what Steven referred to him as, uh, who Crowder forced into cross-dressing. Yeah, this is, this is one of the, uh, the guys who most maintains that he was sexually abused in the workplace by Steven Crowder. Counsel, sexually harassed and, uh, and abused in the workplace. Not understanding my predicament, uh, he even agreed to work for half of his normal rate. Even so the legal fees immediately began to pile up. My former employer and his attorney argued I could not work in media anywhere in the world, and most certainly not in the United States for two years. Um, this is not because I involuntarily signed some sort of non-compete in my original employment agreements. It was because they decided a non-solicitation clause that was inside original Brutus Magnuson, thank you for- retroactively be interpreted as the broadest and strictest non-compete one could draft. Brutus Magnuson, thank you very much for super chatting. Four ninety nine. Too baked to say anything insightful or clever. So I'll give you money and tell you you're an awesome creator and activist. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You told me my Twitter account, a, another potential lifeline to future work, uh, which I'd owned and been the sole manager of since 2009, was to be turned over to them on the argument that it was somehow their intellectual property now. Uh, presumably to keep me from working even further, my former employer even tried to claim my personal production equipment gear I had owned for years prior to working there as company property. After producing every receipt to validate my ownership, a vicious lie that I stole from the company was born and disseminated by my employer. Uh, by the way, breaking their side of this bogus mutual non-disparagement agreement. Um, I have those receipts as well. All I simply wanted to do was peacefully leave. Oh, okay, so I can't watch and It was scroll. clear to my employer, though, that this was not only unacceptable, but that I needed to be punished for doing so. Being bullied on each of these terms and many more, fighting for my basic freedoms to leave and provide for my family immediately sent me into legal debt. I did not want to sign anything, mind you. Um, but the negotiations with my former employer left no question that without a signed NDEA, my guaranteed silence, uh, I would undoubtedly be harassed well into the future. No matter if there are future claims against me for, for where I worked or uh, what I did or what I said were legitimate or not, it didn't matter. It would cost me thousands and thousands to fight back and they knew that. I had to make a deal. With nothing but uh, a small savings account and my last paycheck, I had to accept the deal I could afford. It's very important to note here that, uh, where is it? It's here. I was not paid a single dollar for its consideration. Uh, which brings me to what you might be asking next. What was the reason I did sign this? And uh, again, as a, a man with his first child on the way, the... Uh, the small victory I got from it. The primary reason I signed the NDA was for a small carve out in the non-compete clause, which allowed me to freely seek employment using some of my skill sets at another specific company. Uh, at least I could feed my family. That provision, however, was a lie. Um, and upon starting my new job at the new said company, I was giving another one of these, a cease and desist, and uh, was promptly unlawfully terminated from that, that position. I added thousands more to my legal debt trying to fight back. My wife was very pregnant by this time and without a financial safety net for groceries and a baby crib, much less a legal fund to file a countersuit, I simply had to let it go, trusting God had a plan. Uh, to that point, I wanna say that I'm happy to report that he did have a plan and what was intended for evil, God used for good. And it took me years to pay off my legal debt, but the story of God's faithfulness in my life became a, a very large part of my testimony. And I am um, just so grateful for the opportunities that he gave me and, uh, Yes, yeah, story for another day, but um, back to this. <laughs> While my supposed not compete expired after two years, unfortunately, the most egregious part of my NDA, the part that silences my free speech, has no expiration. While NDAs are classically used to protect, uh, protect trade secrets, unfortunately, in the entertainment industry, they are too often used to protect disgusting, unlawful activity in many forms of abuse. We see examples of this all the time. 
Powerful people and their attorneys routinely use NDAs to silence victims in order to remain powerful people. Free speech matters. It matters a lot to me, and that's not just a t-shirt slogan. It really matters. And these kinds of NDAs right here, starting from this, are unquestionably unconstitutional. I will not live with the burden of this unconstitutional NDA over the head, over my head for the rest of my life, especially when information I have can be used to aid other victims escape their own abusive situations, which is the context for which this former employer feels they caught me breaking my agreement. Let me be clear, what I'm afraid of is legal harassment and perpetuity, not the truth. Only one side of this ordeal is spending a fortune to hide truth and punish anyone who dares speak up for themselves or other victims. While I would not give in to the harassment uh, by my former employer, I have to recognize that this process has already become unbearably expensive, uh, not only because of the general expense of the legal process, but because my former employer has seemingly unlimited wealth and resources to gleefully spend uh, punishing powerless people. I tried to handle legal fees on my own these last months, and uh, the fees have already reached the tens of thousands of dollars with no resolution in sight. Unstopped, this type of legal abuse could go on for years and years and quickly escalate into hundreds of thousands of dollars as I fight to protect myself and my family. I cannot put my wife and my children through this. Not again. I cannot be bound to an unconstitutional NDA like this forever. Uh, protecting my family means finding a path that doesn't leave us in financial ruin. And we are simply out of funds. And I enough is enough. Okay, so this is boring and not what I wanted to really go into. Um, but this kicked off a current schism that is happening in right-wing Twitter. That is actually very funny to me. Um, because Pearl Davis may be one of the most pathetic people on... Uh... Why that's so small. Maybe one of the most pathetic people on, like, just in the, uh, she's, she's pretty pathetic. She's pretty pathetic, but she has, let's go look at, like, she has, if, if you haven't seen, I would fully recommend, go check out Fundy Friday's video on Pearl Davis, where she, um, They, they show off in depth a lot of her old videos and how she just has like this self-loathing at her core. Like a, a truly deep hatred of herself. Um, and that, that really, the way that presents itself is as her bizarre activism against like women's rights uh and stuff like that <laughs> let me i'm trying to find god the problem with going back in on timelines is that these people tweet so like i tweet a lot and i'm i'm really trying to to work on it i i really am uh but these people are so terminally online, it's bonkers. Uh, but Pearl Davis, in addition to just like arguing garbage things like uh, women shouldn't be allowed to vote, which is a thing that she truly believes, has recently... Um, come out swinging in defense of Steven Crowder saying that despite the video that we all saw where he was abusive to his wife and threatened her and yelled at his pregnant wife who wanted to take a car to go do stuff and he was like well I didn't want to be left home alone without a car like despite the very obvious abuse oh my goodness Mr. Oakby thank you very much for the thousand biddies Pearl has been arguing that there was actually no abuse. And she thinks 
This was not a big, this is not a big deal. You were not taking the car. Because if you... This, uh, I need, like, watch this and think how bad you have to have your relationships to look at this and be like, yeah, this isn't a big deal. Asking a pregnant woman to not take a car to go do things. A woman who is heavily pregnant while you sit on the back porch and smoke your ciggies. And you want your pregnant wife to administer possibly dangerous medicine. Like, what kind of bitch do you have to be? And I, I mean not just Pearl Davis. I also mean Andrew Wilson. Um, to, like, look at that and be like, yeah, that's that's fine. If you to do wifely things, then I will go pick up the groceries. American groceries. I have steaks. Wood pellets. My grill. I know it's not a reasonable request. But I'll go do it. How about you first? Okay, Stephen, I can't. D feeling some constraints? Steven. Like, I can't Steven. go. I, listen to me. Listen to me. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. The dude is such... Like, like he really is just in a suspended state of teenage development. Like, it's, it's not wrong to go as an adult over to your parents, but, like, the three things you think of to go do are gym, parents, and friends? What are you, 16? I can't go. I can't be home. You're gonna take the car and leave me here. Hillary, just think of how boxing you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. That doesn't work either. See? That doesn't work either. Oh my god. I, I, do you understand the difference between my life being set to the second and you're going to be back when I'm back? The only way out of it is discipline or stuff. He is saying that his his pregnant wife, the person who's carrying his child, needs discipline and respect. The only way out of it is yeah. we're at an impact. We are at an impact. Good. Because you can't have any discipline or respect. You don't have any discipline and respect there you for go. me. You throw your hand, you give up so easily. I don't give up so easily. You, know, you, you give up so easily. I, I just said the only way out of this is discipline and respect. You said, then we're at an impact. Steven, no, we are at an impact. Okay? I love you, but Steven, Steven, you're a beast. <laughs> Watch it. Watch it. Fucking watch it. I'm gonna let go. I'll get what you need me to get. And I, I need some space. How do you hear a woman, a pregnant woman, dealing with a man who is obviously being irrational? How do you hear a woman go, your abuse is sick? And the man immediately goes, fucking watch it. And you, that doesn't raise any suspicions. And you're going to side with him. Like, I don't I don't give a fuck if it's a Steven Crowder. I don't give a fuck if it's Jon Stewart. I don't care who this is. Like, how... I, I don't understand how a dick like... Oh, no, I understand. Okay, no. Paleo Khan, Christian husband, father, host of The Crucible. Oh, yeah, we've watched something from this dipshit before. No, I remember. Yeah, okay. No, that makes that tracks. You need to just stop engaging for a little bit, okay? I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. I've never received love from you, and the fact is, when I go, look, I need an A, B, C, and D, just be disciplined about it. You go, no. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. It's not fair. It's not fair, and it's disingenuous. Hillary, you're right. Right in past. Become someone. Day in and day out, worthy of 
A, a wife needs to be worthy. God, you people wife? are so Hillary? fucking no, sick. Hillary, Hillary, come on now. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage anymore. I'm going to go. I'll get texting what you need. I'll get you what you need. And then I'll like, she is being entire... She is being, personally, far too reasonable for how childish and pathetic he's being. Like, quite frankly, she has done her due diligence, like, minutes ago. The fact that she is still like, I'll get what you need, instead of just literally not talking and walking the fuck out. She is being s the bigger person on every conceivable level. I, I love you. I'm committed to you. Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm are you committed enough to put on gloves and give this medication to the dogs that your doctor says might hurt you if you're pregnant? What the fuck? You're just sitting on your back patio, you dick. No, I'm, God. I'm not Are you committed enough to do those things? You're not committed to anything. You're not committed to anything. You just said I love you and committed to that. Walk the dogs put on some gloves. Walk the dogs put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Walk the dog. Your pregnant wife. You want her to walk the dogs while you sit your lazy ass down on your million dollar patio furniture or go visit your friends or whatever the fuck. Like, it's, it's cartoonish that anybody could look at this and like Pearl retweeted, doesn't seem like a huge deal to me. All right, let's, let me try to go back down and see some of the stuff between her and the quartering. Because, because she's a she's in the manosphere. She's an MRA. She's a man's rights, men's rights activist. Where she thinks that's like okay and cool to side against women. Oh, yeah, <laughs> she fucking retweets Owen Benjamin. Oh my God, she's such a scumbag. Owen Benjamin, by the way, the quote unquote comedian uh, who was featured in our second look at conservative comedians, who, make no mistake about it, his special is filmed in a fucking cornfield and it was just an excuse for him to say the N-word with a hard R. Like that's, that's who she's, that's who she's taking on uh, on faith here. God, she's such a scumfuck. Steven Crowder is innocent, like I predicted. Conservatives called an innocent man an abuser. Yes, it sounds like an evil abuser saying he fucked you or I'll fuck you up to your wife. Like, how how do you admit, yeah, he said I'll fuck you up to his wife, but not in an abusive way. What? She might have deleted the, the quartering stuff. All right, am I going to have to go to... Oh, am I going to have to go to quartering side of things? I think she might have deleted the stuff with the quartering because she was beefing with uh, Hambone for a little bit. And she's been, she's been shitting on Lauren Southern the whole time. 
uh, too, which is how the other, um, how I found out about it because I get, I see quartering's dog shit on my feed all the time. Oh, fuck you, you fucking piece of shit. Basic broads. It also he is so clearly in on a grift right now. He show which he showed possibly in the funniest way. Um what the fuck? Super cool and normal. Um Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, are we gonna... Mm, okay, we're gonna... Unfortunately, guys, I think we're gonna have to watch the JP Sears Planet Fitness thing. Um, I'll add that onto the things that we're gonna watch when we're done checking in on this. <sighs> do, do, do. Yeah, always great how he's like, nobody cares about something. Oh, you mean the quartering's voice is so grating. Could it be the way that he talks like this to try and draw out every syllable because he never actually writes a script and just pulls everything he says out of his ass? Is that what you mean? Woman explained Godzilla to the quartering. Oh! Fuck, I'm gonna have to watch. Okay. We're gonna watch two people. This is this is a, a real meeting of the minds, everybody. Um For those who don't know, Jeremy Hambly, the quartering, quarter pounder, hambone, has been a low cow for years and yet somehow has like a stage in the political space which is very funny because he does no research and is just misinformed on everything however uh probably most famous for pissing in his basement when he was drunk on stream one time and also his wife uh pizza cooking him <laughs> like his wife going and getting pizza with another guy um and then melody mac a almost 40 year old grifter who has changed her from like an emo e-girl to like trad christian e-girl and is most famous for being hospitalized for forgetting to drink water and eating sticks of butter as a superfood so um yeah jen scarlet that's that's the sad thing is that like the the quartering had a channel like there were there was a point where the courting seemed like somebody who had actually had genuine care for the things he does but now he just shits out content like every day like he puts out like three or four videos a day and it's it's the lowest effort content in the world yeah she's like 37 or something which like fair enough she looks good for 37 i think it's the just like She's, like, very petite, though, and she very clearly wears, like, a lot of foundation and makeup. A Disco Cobra says, not related to any of this stuff, but how many people are going to see Godzilla Kong movie tomorrow? I'm watching that on Saturday with my family. I can't wait. I don't understand Godzilla at all. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Because you're... you're an idiot, Jeremy. I have... I was going to pull... I don't have a gut. <laughs> Excuse you. I have the closest I have is I have this little Megalon right here on my desk. I have this little Megalon. And then I have Doug. I have Titanus Doug from the new movie. Uh, and then I have this little Jet Jaguar right here. This little Jet Jaguar. 
Um, but I don't have any other Godzillas. I think I have... No, I got, I got one right here. Yeah, I got some. Oh, oh, I got... Ah, shit. Okay. Sorry. I got plenty. I got my... Here's my... This is a little uh, Shin Godzilla finger puppet I keep near my desk. I love him. He's so dumb looking. Love him. I bought that one from Japan. Uh, and this is, I've shown these off before, but these are from some Japanese or uh, Southeast Asian blind boxes. And my little, little chubby Godzilla. Little chubby boy. Love those. And then I have the littlest little Baragon in the world. I will show right here. He's so tiny. He's so baby and so tiny. Rah. All right, that's enough toy time. Um, but yeah, it doesn't surprise me that this fake nerd doesn't know shit about shit. I don't understand it. I saw probably one of the worst. If you're like a Godzilla fan, I, I, what I'm about to say is they're gonna be. You're probably gonna say like, no wonder. But like a lot of people, I saw that Godzilla 2000 or whatever the hell with Matthew Broderick. Oh. Godzilla 2000. Famously not the same as the Matthew Broderick one. Those are those are two two different films. Those are two different films made like four years apart. What? Oh, the 1998 one. That one yeah. sucked. Well, okay. So I, that's the only Godzilla movie I've ever seen. And I was like, <gasps> everyone's no like, you gotta you see. No you don't like it. You have yeah. to watch Minus One. Everyone says I have to see my, I have to see, is it stream? God, you, I, okay. I actually, I don't care. I've, I've been, I'm, I'm mad now. Um, though, oh, this was a very funny thing, though. Um, worked out walk dogs did video, read the story of creation. I have to read like every paragraph twice, so it's slow going. <laughs> The Bible, especially the beginning, a story so simple it is taught easily to children. And he's just admitting he has to read every paragraph twice. That's, I would simply, I would simply not admit such a thing. Um... Have you watched Pantheon, the AMC show? I have not. What is it about? I, I don't have, uh, or I guess I have some things. I've been watching a lot of Hulu lately. I've been going through The Shield because I just got done well, a couple months ago. A couple months ago, I watched Justified, which is a great fucking show. And then I got to, I watched a bunch of sitcoms when I was going through all my darkest material. Um, and then now I am doing, uh, I went through City Primeval, also great show. And then I am, um, now I've been doing the shield. Um, all right, where where was the shit with? Oh God, he's standing, Alex Jones. Alex Jones is a national treasure. Fuck, man. Like, it, I, I would say the quartering has fallen off, but was he ever on? Oh, and the quartering is also trying to make it sound like Jared Monroe um, 
was sexually involved with Steven Crowder's wife? Like, it, it has been so fucking bonkers. Yeah, okay. He's not wrong there. Like, like, God, again, there are certain times that people like him and, and Boogie's been doing this lately, too, where it's like, you are, you are this close to understanding your role in this ecosystem, buddy. You're so, you're, oh, you're on the, you're just like, oh, on the edge of, like, ego death. Like, saying, the quartering saying, people like Pearl, Fresh and Fit, etc. They are all the same. They beg and plead for you to believe. They want to help you, but offer nothing. Keep super chatting, though. How is that different than your current constant culture war grift, Jeremy? How is you selling coffee and saying, ah, oh, keep coming back here so we can we can win the, the culture war? How is that different from what you're claiming Fresh and Fit is doing? What? Um Okay, yes, here we go. Pearl demanding Lauren Southern's ex-husband's phone number. Uh, and this was the point at which Pearl blocked Jeremy. Um, because Lauren Southern was saying, I offered my husband full shared custody with absolutely no strings. He rejected it. Because Pearl has been advocating for, like, all husbands deserve to have contact with their kids and stuff. Um, he's been rejected. He's been offered over a dozen times to partake in mediation to visit his child. He rejected it. Perhaps talk about things you know about Pearl. Pearl's response, give me his number, Lauren. I'll verify. I'll make sure, I'm sure you have all the details correct. Pearl, or from Lauren. Pearl, you leaked Stephen's court deposition that wasn't supposed to be public and didn't bleep out the nanny's address or info. Why would I give you any info about my personal life? Also, why would you state I'm hiding my child when you just admitted to not knowing any details? Uh, literally, in my, in my streaming notes, the link for this... I have it as uh, the girlies are fighting. Anyway, I gotta go check out. Um, what was I? What was I just looking up? Oh yeah, JP Sears. <sighs> Oh, pay, includes paid promotion. I'm fucking shocked. Uh, the quartering... There was something with Black Rifle Coffee. I want to say... I don't, I don't remember all the details, but I think he had a falling out with Black Rifle Coffee, if I remember right. Like, I think he had a falling out over something during COVID, and he has his own brand of coffee that he does now. I'm, I think it's his own. Yeah, I left the stove on. JP Sears here with the exact same video for the millionth fucking time. Um, JP Sears. For those who have not been tainted by his presence, JP Sears is a quote unquote comedian who actually started out as a life coach several years ago before moving into more of a comedic role on YouTube, trying to kind of skewer or make jokes about um, like crunchy, nature-loving type people before just basically grifting that into a full-on right-wing paranoia factory, which is what he does here. And we, we've we watched some of his stuff before. We watched, uh, if you go back, and I believe I featured him on one of my... Um, Again, another another person who's been featured on my conservative comedy videos. But when you watch his stuff, JP is frustrating because it's so clear that not only does he not interact with anybody who is, is even remotely to the left, but all of his ideas about them are just... Like... like it is just everything he likes is very cool and awesome, and anything he doesn't is the worst, most nonsensical, stupid thing in the world. 
and he makes no effort to try and like parse those or ever poke fun at himself or or the things that he likes or the cool things on his side which is why his stuff is so popular with conservatives because they don't want their worldview ever challenged by anything they can't handle being made fun of in any way um but they love to make fun of others and yeah, no, his his jokes are awful, like uniformly awful. He is when when you look at comedy, and I think Thought Slime did a great video about JP. But when you look at comedy, comedy and it, satire is like can be used as a part of comedy. It's not always comedic in nature, but I try and think of the rule of satire, where like to really satirize something, you do have to understand it. You have to understand how it works. If you think of any subject as a machine, you have to take it apart to understand how the gears fit together, to put it back together to accomplish the goal that you want. Conservatives don't like that. <laughs> and so he just makes literally no effort to understand of it. And that can also go for comedy. And not, not always, but like, the, the classic truism, and I say this as somebody who is a comedian, who has been on stage, who has been paid to be on stage to tell jokes. The universal truism, and you'll always hear people say it, it's funny because it's true. Which is not necessarily, like that's not 100% accurate. But, there is a, there is a grain of truth to that. Like, things are generally funny because you recognize them to be true. Whether it's somebody doing an impression of somebody. You know, it, it's... Think think of an impression, for example. If you do a good or bad impression of somebody, the thing that makes it funny isn't if the actual pitch and tone of somebody, if they're getting it right... It's the cadence. It's picking up on little ticks in how somebody speaks that you're like, oh my God, I didn't even realize that. But yeah, that's totally what they sound like. And to do that, you have to actually watch and pay attention and understand how somebody speaks and how they relate to put together an impression. And a lot of comedy is actually like that. To, to make the best joke possible, you have to figure out how it works, why it works. Because at a certain point, just pointing and laughing at something and saying, ha, this is dumb. Like, yeah, it might get some other bullies and like-minded people to laugh with you. But it's not actually good comedy. See, good comedy, and this is true, can make anybody laugh on either side of the channel. And I, oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, goodness, give me just one second. Holy cat. Oh. Blech. Okay, sorry. Kazoon tight. God bless you. Um, the thing about comedy, and I, I, I was just thinking about this because I've been going back over because I've been trying to get back into uh, my local comedy scene and I, I actually just talked to the, it, it's a whole thing. Anyway, I am trying to get back into hosting and actually resuming where I was last year. And I went back and I, I watched the host set I did for Brittany Schmidt, who's a, a traveling comedian who came through town. And I just remember, I, got, I was so nervous going out there because it was my first hosting set. But I remember there was this table off because it, you know, it's a big, it's a comedy club. So there's a stage and then there's a bunch of tables. There's this table off to the right. And it was just guys who, like the, the, the vibe you get, and you get these vibes sometimes at open mics and other places. The vibe you get is that they're bros, like dude bros, like maybe Rogan heads, you know? Um, like, like they weren't decked out in like three percenter gear or anything, but I got the impression, the, the immediate just 
the feeling in the air that when they saw me, a trans person in a dress on stage, I got the impression that they were put off. That they were like, oh great, here comes the woke shit. And so I, I did my set. I did like a couple minutes of, you know, pretty clean, pretty tame material. And as I started transitioning into some harsher stuff, I told a joke that I was like, this one is going to get them. Uh, Renaru, what are three percenters? Three percenters are militia types, like people who go and train in the woods with guns and think they're super cool for uh, cosplaying Tom Clancy on the weekends. <laughs> Um, pun intended. And so, I forgot where, where I was. Oh, yeah. So, I made one of my jokes, and it's a joke I've told on stream. Um, it's the joke about trans porn. Because it always, coming from a trans person, always had such a good, shocking reaction for the crowd. And as soon as I said it, as soon as I said it, and the, the punchline is me saying the F slur. So that, like, like that's, that's literally the punchline. And as soon as I said it, I got him on, on my side. Like that is, that's the power of comedy is even though I am a leftist, I can tell a joke that people who might be more conservative will laugh at. I can get them on my side. Uh, I mean, Jen Scarlett, you know the joke now. Right, let me see if I can actually, I can probably find it on Insta. Let me find it on Insta. Jen Scarlett, you probably know the joke. <laughs> what in tarnation? I don't wanna. Do I really gotta? Uh. Boo. Um. Uh, hmm. Oh, you know what? Actually, give me a sec. I know where I can get it. Here we go. Are the ones for transform? Thank you for the comments, though. The whole of comments. Are the ones for transform? Because there's always a guy in the comment section having a crisis because he just jacked it to a chick with a dick. <laughs> and he's just like, is this thing you get? <laughs> no, idiot. It's like, I, I try to imagine a homophobic little voice in his head trying to talk him up like, oh yeah, like fat asses, big hits, big tits, long hair, lots of makeup. Faggot. I, it still makes me laugh. I still love that joke. It's so... I love it. Um, <laughs> like, because it, it turns the whole thing back around and it makes people think. And it's it's also... It's one of the first bits that I have I got people, like, really laughing uh, with when I started doing comedy. And I'm, like, I'm, I'm never fucking getting rid of that thing. That's, that's one of my favorites. Um... Like, it's so simple, setup super easy, which is hard to do. Good setup for a profane punchline that is quick and easy, like 40 seconds, that's not easy to get. Um, but yeah, like, that's, that's the kind of joke. Like, 
it crosses boundaries. And not only does it cross boundaries, it still makes people think because it might make those kind of guys who'd be like, oh yeah, girl with the dick is it's gay. But then they have to actually think about it for a second and be like, oh yeah, actually I do like, I do like makeup. And I do like when girls have long hair and big asses and titties. So I guess, I just, I guess that doesn't make me gay. I like those things. Like, it's gay for me. Um, I didn't realize it was you, DT. I was so confused. Yeah, no, that's me. So, to to talk for a second, and, and I realize this has been a little bit of a tangent, but that, to me, is a good encapsulation. And, and the way that it was actually at that show, if the camera panned over a little bit more to the left, you'd have been able to see the table I was talking about. Like, you can, it doesn't matter what side of the ideological spectrum you're on. And there, there are people who I still don't like. Their, I'll, I might laugh at their joke every now and again. If it's a good joke, it's a good joke. Um, I do hate how a lot of comedians do this shit, though, when they get on stage. And they're like, ah, they'll, they'll say something stupid and inflammatory. And they'll be like, oh, it's it, these are just jokes. People need to remember. People are so uptight. You can't joke about anything anymore. I hate that shit. I've heard that. Having been at so many live comedy shows at the comedy club, I have heard that shtick so many times. It is so annoying to hear a white man over 40 be like, uh, you know, we can't tell jokes anymore. And then he tells some offensive shit to the crowd and they all just eat it up. It's like, it, it's just, ugh, ugh. Anyway, um, that, that shit does bug me. That, ooh, that bothers me. I, I think that's cheap. Um... Bummy Montana, thank you for following. Anorak the All-Knowing, thank you for following. And Beanie Techie and Tess Scud, thank you for following. Um. Jace Burke, why why are you why are you saying fuck you in the chat, buddy? What, what are you doing, Jace? Yeah, I have no, I have no idea what is happening in chat right now. I'm trying to not. Yeah, no, Danny Hart. I hate when people start philosophizing from the mic. That's another like. I've, I've talked about it again in the comedy things, but there's something that happens when comedians get a little bit older and maybe a little bit wiser, and they start reflecting on their years, or maybe they've put down roots and they have kids now, or their kids are getting older and they think about life and they start trying to turn to philosophy. And I think it's, it's really. A lot of comedians want their George Carlin phase, but not, I would say 99% of them are not nearly as introspective or as cutting and smart as George Carlin. Um, because George Carlin, like the thing is, George Carlin could take the piss from everybody, but he had a perspective on it. Whereas everybody else, they go, ah, oh, you know, we should all be able to joke about everybody. And they, they basically just want license to make fun of everybody and not be canceled quote unquote canceled for it which like unless you're actually doing lewis ck shit or bill cosby shit you're not actually going to be canceled as a fucking comedian like get get out of here like i'm so uh i'm so tired of people who have fucking tours and tour buses and managers and entourages going on stage in front of sold out shows four times a week and talking about how canceled they are like fuck off Anyway, sorry. These these things actually made make me mad in comedy. Uh, it's it's not it's not like them making the same tired homophobic or transphobic jokes over and over that I've been hearing for twenty years. It's it's that sh that shit. <laughs> yeah, no, John Bainbridge, you gotta earn Carlin level ranting. No, exactly. No, and, and Dave, Makuta LaRocca, Dave Chappelle bugs me because Dave Chappelle is such a gifted storyteller. Maybe one of the best storytellers in comedy because he has such an amazing flow where he will bring you in into these moments that feel so intimate and so personal. Or he can. He can do this when he wants to. And then he'll just flip it around on some wild shit. And I, I fucking, I love that. 
but the new material that he has is just using that just seismic talent that he has for storytelling and it's just bitching about kids these days like it's it's so it's so disappointing it's like and that was the thing that so many people in my comments when i did the video on ricky gervais and david chappelle because they had two specials that came out at the beginning of the year so many people in my comments were like oh you just can't handle the joke it's like no i like i get the joke it's just fucking disappointing like i i know that these two comedians can do so much better i can i can see it but like ricky gervais's set has multiple just like ah, kids these days did you know they offer this college course how crazy is that it's like what the fuck are we doing here dude like i don't wh what Yeah, I guess I did, Banana Brain ZEF. It's, it's showing me YouTube and Twitch right now. But anyway, now that we've talked about good comedians and okay comedians, um, let's watch together the death of comedy. So we can, we can really... Oh, no, not what I wanted. Aha, you, don't get, you guys don't get to see that. Um... Yeah, exactly. Like, people called Fire Corgi uh, on Twitch. I feel like Dave Chappelle took an L for a trans joke. He told him instead of moving and growing as a person, it's like he needed to justify his joke by making, making more ambition. Yeah, like, that was the thing, is that he kept making these callbacks in his set that would derail... Like, there were points in the new special where he was locked for a killer punchline. And he would fucking throw it away to call back to a trans joke or a trans controversy or like just bringing trans people into the joke for no fucking reason. It's like, like I get you might think it's funny to like fuck with people on, on a level of like trolling, you might think it's personally funny, which like whatever, you're, you're rich as hell, you can do whatever you want. But on a level of craft, it is bad comedy. It's, it's just, it's fucking lame. It's just like, you you could be doing so much better. What are you doing? Ugh. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Logan Mansion Games. Um, and for those who don't know, Libs of TikTok has been going on. She's been on her Matt Walsh shit where, if you remember last year when Matt Walsh and everybody was pissing themselves over Target... <laughs> And, um, oh, Target and, Target and, what the hell was I talking about? Target, Budweiser is the other thing they were pissing themselves about. Um, Hyorajic has been similarly enamored with trying to cancel Planet Fitness after a, get this shit, after a woman took a picture of a trans person changing in the bathroom, and that woman was kicked out, and Haya has been trying to make it seem like the woman was the victim here for taking a picture of somebody else changing in a private bathroom. Uh, and that person also has a history of, um, like, on their Facebook page, I, I forget, oh god, I forget who it was, uh, but you can look it up on Twitter, um... Brett will uh it's one of those journalists that keeps tabs on dorks like Kaya. And the person that she's been defending who got kicked out of Planet Fitness also, would you be surprised to know, has a long history of ascribing to right-wing bullshit talking points like uh microchips being in the back vaccines. Like that's that's the person they're holding up, that's the person they're championing here. Now of course, this is a deranged and nonsensical version of a trans person. Like, like every trans person in media, not in media, but in right-wing media. Like we saw with Lady Ballers, where they don't actually understand what a trans person looks like. No, that's not true, because all of them know Blair White, so they do. 
but they willfully misrepresent it because to them it's funnier to be cruel even if it has no basis in objective reality at all uh and sorry my dog is whining for something so i'm gonna go see what she wants i think she has a ball in a bag what 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 do you want So, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's embark on this together. Oh, all of his all of his thumbnails are cursed. So, are you ready for absolute straw manning? Are you ready for just insulting others appearance based on nothing? Oh boy. Are you ready for bad acting? Cuz this is going to be a skit. I, I forgot to mention that. This is going to be a set. This is going to be a skit. So, buckle the fuckle up and let's, let's go. Hi, ladies. If you're looking to get in great shape, form healthy habits, and be victimized by sexual predators, then a Planet Fitness membership is right for you. Literally no basis for the sexual predator thing. And this, this is how, when people are like, oh, Haya Rychik, uh, she's not lying about people. This is how her narrative spread because she will hold two things together. And now suddenly, to the dullards who watch stuff like this, there's a sexual predator in the Planet Fitness women's room. This has not happened. This, this just has not happened. Let me... At least not in the the case of the trans woman I'm I'm talking about. Uh, but let's go see. Well, that's a different member of staff as a registered sex offender on Jim. Sex offender at gym. Okay, well that is a different thing than the trans thing. Oh, Libs of TikTok has a website. Terrible. So this has nothing to do with the other thing. Yeah, okay, so that that's it. It's just her saying, ah, this happened once. So yeah, it's, it has nothing to do with the trans person. But now, to these people, it somehow does. Thanks, Haya, you fucking lying. Mm. Hi, I'm Planet Fitness spokes them, Roger Moonblood. I'm a certified personal trainer, unregistered sex offender, and the general manager at your local Planet Fitness location, or as what we sometimes like to call your local predatory fitness location. Today, I'm literally going to share with you how Planet Fitness can help you reach your fitness goals better than any other gym. And I'll also share some things about Planet Fitness with you that you didn't know, but will probably surprise you and unnerve you. We're the only gym chain in the country that understands the key to getting in great shape is having diversity, unpredictability, and a predatory ethos in your women's locker room. Just imagine when you're finished working out, taking off your sweaty clothes, you can enjoy one of our cleanly state-of-the-art showers while having a man watch you. I, are, I find the footage that he's choosing to use very gross. Like, like he's seemingly purposefully using this voyeuristic thing, but not, I don't think in the way he intends. You'll also be glad to know that we've recently removed all the doors from the toilet stalls to make it easier for a man to watch you while you're taking a dump.
All Planet Fitness locations have private showers with shower curtains and clean, spacious locker rooms. If I were working for Planet Fitness, I would, uh... Oh yeah, here we go. We got another libs of TikTok. Great. I would, I would look into some legal action over this shit. Which is more inclusive. No, he is an angry goose. It's not even jokes. He's just saying predator in the middle of a fake ad. Yeah, like this, again. JP Sears is not funny. He calls himself a comedian. He doesn't really have jokes. Like, like no other gym. Like there is no setup or even really punchlines. It's just kind of like saying stuff. Does that for you. Our progressive locker room policies have recently earned us a lot of national praise. In the name of inclusivity, we believe very strongly in women's rights and for the right for men to have them. That's what we, we proudly stand for here at Planet Fitness. So much so that if you're a woman and you don't like it, we will take away your right to use our facilities by canceling your membership and banning you. That's an oversimplification of again, a woman who was taking pictures of somebody in a private locker room. Yeah, you can't do that without repercussions like being banned. God, fucking liars. For women's rights. Just like a woman in Alaska learned the hard way recently. Yeah, also somebody pointed out B. Parker literally what praise. The only people talking about Planet Fitness right now are terminally online conservative, like people who are trying to get them canceled. Yeah, no, Shadow <coughs> on YouTube. This is just disgusting. I'm sorry, but I'm too concerned about getting in and out as fast as I can so nobody clocks me and says something turns phobic. And here's the other thing. Most people, unless they are terminally online dorks like this, won't fucking, won't fucking say anything, even if they do notice. <coughs> yeah, Renaru, creep on people in a bathroom. What are you doing? What are you chewing? I hear you yamming on something, little dog. Shaped like a triangle. Yeah, Danny, I haven't even heard about this until now. Because you are normal and you're living your life without caring about all this stupid shit. Recently, when she reported a man for being in the women's restroom when there was a young girl present. <laughs> what a bigoted woman. But our dedication to inclusivity. No, and she, like I was talking about earlier, she literally is. She has advocated for like vaccines having microchips. And, and I want to say uh, Joe Biden, Satan pedophile conspiracy, if I remember right. He doesn't stop there. In 2022, in New Jersey, another woman found out the hard way that reporting a man for being in the women's locker room who was repeatedly exposing himself to her was going to result in her membership being canceled. She lost. I'm sure that story is entirely accurate and not at all. <laughs> Silva consistently misgendered the other woman in the video saying that she loves her quote in Christ and that she is quote a spiritual being having a human experience but that she wasn't comfortable with the woman shaving in my bathroom <laughs> can't find anything with 2022 yeah or, or all this shit's gonna be
May have finished the book. Um, Nettle Soup and Rusty Hardy 79, thank you very much for stepping with Prime. Alright, I can't I can't find it. It's it's gonna take more digging than that to find something from 2022. Just her right to use the Planet Fitness facility while the naked erect man who was exposing himself to her retained his women's rights to use Planet Fitness. Was... Were they erect? It didn't... I didn't see erect on there. Okay, yeah, I was banned. That doesn't say erect. Like, again, Another just making woman shit up. Out the hard way that reporting. Yeah, but Thumb Warrior standing is a synonym for erect, but that's not. That, you know, that's not what he's trying to get at. A man for being in the women's locker room who. Also, a trans woman, erect. Really? Come on was repeatedly on. exposing himself to her was going to result in her membership being canceled. She lost her right to use the Planet Fitness facility while the naked erect man who was exposing himself to her retained his women's rights to use Planet Fitness. And if you think that's impressive, there's more. In 2023 at a Planet Fitness location in Georgia, there was a man in the women's locker room repeatedly exposing himself to women, including a teenage girl. But our Planet Fitness staff being dedicated to what's right. So again, this has nothing to do with trans people using the facilities as intended. By conflating these two instances, they're causing intentional confusion in the conservative mind between actual sex pests and people who are just trying to live their fucking lives. Between cis men and trans women. Things that are diegetically opposed. <laughs> Defended that man and said he had a right to be there. But unfortunately, the police didn't see it that way and they arrested him. The point is that- Oh, thank you very much, Rusty Hardy. I appreciate it. At Fitness, we are proud to say that you get a fitness experience shaped by our company. -wide. And Angry Goose, it's not even a news report because he's just fucking wrong or lying about most of this shit. ...policies dedicated to putting you in jeopardy by creating a safe space for predators to do unsafe things to you. And it's exciting to know that you'll be getting better results because of it. So, how many Planet Fitness locations are there? Okay, that's... Uh, I'm gonna say over 100? Fuck, that's, there's a lot of Planet Fitness. Holy shit. Holy fuck, there's... I am sorry, Planet Fitness. I was unfamiliar with your game. Holy shit. The list just goes. Dog, you need to stop now. You need to stop, honey. You're fine. No, you are fine. Like, the list just goes. It just keeps going. And that's not to say that whatever actual sex crimes that happen aren't worth talking about and worth calling out. Because, yeah, maybe there should be more security in certain areas. But you're talking about three incidents. Two of which are non-incidents. One of which is a criminal incident, which seems like it was taken care of because the picture showed that dude being arrested across what looks like maybe hundreds of locations? Hundreds of locations? Like, but let's let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about how many, I, I guess, I don't even know how many. Fuck, dude. As of 2023, Planet Fitness had approximately 18.7 million members. Twenty four hundred stores, Hex Zero. Eighteen point seven million members. And and granted, that does include Mexico, Australia, and all these other places, but like 
you're talking three incidents. Like, like unless you are going to talk about hundreds of incidents here, how are you fucking... Hey, uh, Zelda Harkinian, you said that unfunny shit already in a comment section. Do you have anything else to say? Or do I need to ban you? If, you, if you're just going to call me a fucking predator with no actual proof or talking points or anything to back it up, I'm just going to ban you. So make your next words count. Oh, you're that stupid bitch. No, seriously. I I'm I'm genuinely curious. Zelda, do you like not have anything better to do in life? Like like seriously in general. Do you not have anything better to do than to continue making going through the effort of making new accounts, new accounts to stalk me? on YouTube just so you can come in here again and get banned? Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, do, do you not have anything else going on in your life? Like, you don't have like a modeling kit to put together, like a date to go on. You don't got like some pizza to order, some video games to play, like anything? Come on. Thank you, Banana Brains. It's the it's the low tier god. He just spams the low tier god kill yourself thing. Like, he's he's literally been doing it for months at this point. Months. Like, I will ban him, and he'll come back with a new username. Like, do something else, dude. Like, what the fuck? Like, months and months now. Like, I'm uh, probably going on four or five. And I'm just like, I there, there are a lot of people I hate, but like... I've probably banned him five or six times now. Kecker Dane, thank you very much for $10. I'm glad you're able to catch this stream. Thanks for all that you've been doing. I really enjoyed the CPAC videos, and this is the first live stream I could catch. I am glad you could catch it as well. Mighty Mulatto, thank you for super chatting. $5, not gonna lie. That Bible looks sturdy. I wonder if it's leather bound or just glued together. I'm sure it's I, I'm sure it's actually like a fine Bible. I can't imagine it's hard to actually put a book together, like to manufacture a book. Um, I'm sure it's fine, but like $60 is fucking nuts. Anyway, let's get back to this nonsense. How's that work? Well, what you might not know is when you're forced to share a women's locker room with sexual predators, your body goes under a fight or flight response. And with that, you get an elevated heart rate and breathing rate, which is the same as doing cardio. So- Oh, okay, no, this is the, the joke he's making. He's doing a joke. In a sense, when your workout ends and the violation begins, Jesus your body continues Christ. to get- Christ. The violation begins? Literally saying, like making a joke out of rape and sexual assault. What? Why? Why are these people so scummy? How do you scummy? work out for several hours or years, depending on the level of trauma, thanks to our Planet Fitness policies? Other facts that you might not know about Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is the most body positive gym chain in the world. With our members only... This is a face that you know has not been, uh, like punch directly and pro probably needs it probably needs it 
yeah the whole bit is trans women are predators and that's it for the that that's just it that, that's it oh danny thank you very much that's how i first started watching your videos pizza parties i can i can make it to the end i can make it to the end and our policies against having squat racks and other forms of effective workout equipment in the gym uh could it be because people easily fucking hurt themselves all the time on benches and squats because kids don't learn how to do squats correctly and and everybody like bench presses are not to be fucked with honestly um, and I feel like a lot of people don't, don't give that it's do do, uh, but no. All right, so I guess they don't have squat racks. You can still do exercise alternatives like the Smith machine squat. So, oh, so they have equivalent exercises that don't put you at risk shocker so you can do this the smith machine squat which is similar to using squat racks and works the same types of muscles because Planet Fitness, instead of getting equipment that caters to serious lifters, the company removed equipment that can make members feel intimidated. A Planet Fitness gym membership is really for the average gym goer who'd rather avoid judgment and intimidation from other people as they use various equipment as gym. I, I don't know how true that is. Like, those are very basic implements. I, I don't... I think it probably has more to do with free weights if I, if I had to guess and just the fact that like if you don't have a spotter both of these things if you don't have a spotter and you go into a planet fitness if if it is indeed for casual lifters for people who might be lifting it for the first time trying to go into a gym for the first time and you don't have a spotter and don't know how to do a proper squat or don't know how to do a proper um bench That can end badly. Like that that makes sense. Like I don't I don't Yeah, whatever. So they do have equivalent machines. So this is another lie. Alright, I'll call it an exaggeration. We aim to provide you a place to work out while discouraging you from working out. We know that using squat racks and barbells increase your risk of acquiring things like fitness. And that's not a risk that Planet Fitness is gonna expose you to. In the name of our body power. Jesus, God, he's so fucking bad at this. Gorgor, thank you very much. Riot Girl, thank you for super chatting 20. I appreciate it. Positivity ethos. Once your membership ends, we want you to look just as disgusting as the first day that you walked in our door. Because anything else would just literally be judgmental. Accordingly, we're known for having what are called lunk alarms, which is an alarm in the gym that goes off to warn you if someone is actually working out hard. And while we have lunk alarms, Look this up. Uh, the occasional weight dropping, the grunt during a lift, blah, blah, blah. Fuck off. Get out of here. Um... When a person grunts and drops weights, it draws unwanted attention. The lunk alarm will sound and the club manager will intervene. It is not always that the alarm will sound as it can be turned off at the manager's discretion. More often, a person breathes too loudly. So, okay, so this is just like when dumbass gym bros are doing reps and they're like, uh, 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 and then they fucking drop their 50 pound barbells and it echoes and dings the floor up. Like, working out too hard when your target demographic are normal people you'd want them to feel welcome in an attempt to make most of their clients feel less intimidated planet fitness introduced the lunk alarm uh while grunting or crashing weights will elicit some dirty looks the lunk alarm will sound in their gym 
to make the gym friendly to new gym goers and novices, hence they need to try to discourage behaviors that make their clients uncomfortable. What is accepted as a normal practice in regular gyms is being banned at Planet Fitness. I, yeah, it shouldn't be a normal practice. It's fucking shitty and annoying. Fuck off. Like, I, I always hated that shit. I always hate that shit when you've got just one gym head who's just like, ugh, 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 and they do that, like, deep, like, like, I shouldn't be able to hear you lifting if I've got fucking headphones on. Yeah, I'm working out so hard by making everybody uncomfortable. Like, there, there. that's not to be saying you do need to breathe a certain way. Like, especially if you're, if you are into heavy lifting, you do need to have proper, like, breathing control. But, like, some assholes overdo it. I don't care. Like, if, if you want to not have them in your gym, that's fine. Also, again, these measures that he's criticizing, he's trying to make it sound like you you can't actually work out there. You can. But he's, he's defeating his own point by talking about these things that were made and changed to allow for a more friendly environment for this massive chain. I did not know it was that massive. But this massive chain that has a wide variety of people in there who might not want to fucking feel like they're in a gym from Rocky. You know? Like... You'll be relieved to find out that we definitely don't have predator alarms. When you come to Planet Fitness, while you look out at a sea of obnoxiously purple workout equipment that can give you very little benefit, you'll also be delighted to... I see, uh, very little benefit. Uh, I mean, they have free weights. We already, we already saw that. They have equivalents for those two things he said planet fitness doesn't have i see i see treadmills those are kind of a classic oh hell yeah uh eric rice two dollars thank you very much two dollars for episode 200 of the qaa podcast jp sucks yes uh yeah and go listen to q and on us i've been going back through and listening to a lot of them lately to know that Planet Fitness works hard to achieve a very impressive DEI score. One way that we achieve such good DEI fitness... Yeah, no, Two-Face Place, that's the other thing. Any workout equipment can help. Like, you can stay in good shape. You can build muscle with almost no workout equipment. Like, using natural weight. Like, you, you can get in good shape just using your own body weight. is by discriminating against white people and that we make sure we intentionally hire less and less of them. That is racial discrimination and less and less of them. That's, is that just spreading DEI shit? Is there anything to base that on? Let me see, uh, DEI. There you go. Providing accessible and inclusive fitness spaces that allow members of all races, backgrounds, and ethnicities to feel like they belong. Cool. Trans-inclusive policies. Ah. There we go. Oh, shocker. He got this from Libs of TikTok. Like, literally just stole the picture from Libs of TikTok. So he, it, like, he is... Not only is this a shitty video, it's all taken from somebody else. Like, none of this is, like... I mean, not too surprising. It's not original research. It's not even research to begin with. All right. Let's, let's see how Libs of TikTok spin stuff. In Planet Fitness DEI report, they boast about creating a more diverse workforce by hiring less white people year over year, discriminating against white people in their hiring practices. Does it say that? Our workforce data is inclusive of team members at our headquarters and corporate clubs. This year, we expanded our team members' self-ID options and data tracking to include non-binary gender status. Based. 
I, uh... I might be crazy, but, um, I'm not seeing anywhere it says... It's good to hire less white people. Yeah, no, he's like, unfortunately he is right about the, the too much purple. I think they should go for like a nineties color scheme and like throw some hot pink and like a, like an aqua blue in there. Like hot pink, aqua blue, yellow and purple. Like really, really make it look like a new kids on the block jacket. That is racial discrimination, and here at Planet Fitness, we also do that, proudly. There's no other gym that gives you more men in the women's locker room, a lower level of equipment, more discouragement from work. Like, literally, as we, here, if there is one thing, if there is one thing I want people to be able to walk away from my streams and my videos from, it's that 90% of this shit is just completely made up, and you can easily disprove it by literally just typing it into Google. Because the people, the 153,000 people who have watched this and given it 15,000, that's not a great ratio, uh, 15,000 thumbs up. I guarantee you, they believe this shit is actually happening. They believe it's actually real. And you never know in life when you have a chance to, somebody's gonna say to you, hey, did you hear about this crazy thing that happened at Planet Fitness? You never know when you can be the person who goes, actually, this didn't happen. And you can help somebody else break out of that mindset and be like, oh yeah, you should look it up for yourself. And not not do your own research by going to libs of TikTok, but actually fucking look it up. Look Like, actually look it up and look into it. Uh. Get out hard. More protection for pedophiles and more discrimination in their hiring practices. What are you waiting for? Pedophile. Or it's time to jump on a treadmill and have a man expose himself to you so you can get your fitness back on track. So come join Planet Fitness today. Our plummeting stock value could really use it. And you'll be happy to find out that if you're a registered sex offender, then you're automatically a registered member here at Planet Fitness. Now I know what you're probably wondering, JP, do you have any pants on? Answer, kinda. But on to bigger problems. I don't know about you, but I have to do a lot of work on my computer and device. That's like a four minute video. Oh God. Oh, of course he has a whole got God. Oh man. Damn, the list of woke businesses down to the comments. The list of woke businesses I boycott is getting very long. Sometimes you just see somebody and you're like, that's not inspiring any self-reflection or anything. No? Okay. Wow. All right. The speed and accuracy of JP's comedy sketches is literally second to none. Sorry, I've been I've been saying nar. Here's the here's if you want to know how bad it is, I I am like a infection vector for gay little sayings. Um and I got I believe I got nar from um Kaylin from one of their videos. And I've been saying it at the same time that my partner and I, one of my partners and I have been watching a lot of drag race. And I think somebody said it on there. And so now we say nar all the time to each other, like unironically, and it's driving me crazy. Like, like, it would be like, oh, actually, you know, they're out of, 
this flavor of soda and I'll be like, no, it's <laughs> yeah. <coughs> anyway, that was fun. Do we want to watch? Let's watch Critical Drinkers movie trailer. Um, this is my one of my favorite things has been, and actually, I want to watch the trailer because there's a rip of verse. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, a Ripaverse movie, comic book movie. Yeah. One of my favorite things has been watching the the woke, anti woke right try and create their own products and slowly realizing I think that oh shit all of the original ideas and talented actors and good uh, set designers are all on the left um, and well so Ripa is the dude uh, who Damn, bro, looks like shit. Um, has, uh, oh God, how, how would I describe it? He has basically made an anti-woke Marvel comics. Um, like has, has tried to start up his own imprint, Ripaverse. Oh, it's a live action promo for the comic? Oh, that's lame. Oh, well, fuck it then. Like, no, I'm not interested anymore. All right, let's watch Rogue Elements official trailer. Goodbye, Spaghetti Code 314. Have I watched Has Been Hotel? I have watched Has Been. I've watched it uh, almost twice through because I watched it alone and then I watched it with a partner. Bravo, I found a target. How, uh, the Kitsune Cavalier, how far on the right does one have to be in order to think of woke as part of a conspiracy? Not that far, honestly. Like, it's, it's a pretty, it's becoming a more mainstream and well-held, like, just normalized belief on the right wing. Like, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy how, like, that's why it's called a rabbit hole, is that it's, it's, it's quick to go down. Bye, Rusty Hardy. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'm glad this was your your first time. I got five guys inside that room. Hold on, Alpha. Let me check the schematics and see if there's another entry point. <sighs> no time for that. Going loud. Real uh, graphic design is my passion, ass logo. Look, at, I mean, gradual upgrade is a hell of a name first. <laughs> oh, thermal scopes, thirteen. Your wimpy white male. Who are you talking to, buddy, Buckaroo? Are you talking to me? This is like thus far. It looks fine. It looks like a direct-to-DVD, like, mid-2000s action movie. And hey, you know what? There's some bangers on there. Like, you ever see uh, uh, Universal Soldier? What's the Universal Soldier where the dude got in a fight with... Uh, one, of the, one of the hardest fights? Is it Retribution? It, was, it, was, it had a name like that. Universal Soldier Regeneration. Do the do they have the uh uh no the fight scene? Is that is this the one I'm thinking of? 
There was a fight in a gym, right? I think, okay, I think this is the one I was thinking of. Universal Soldier. Not a great franchise. It's all right, it has its moments. Um, this, mwah. While, while we're on the subject of direct-to-DVD movies and direct-to-DVD actioners, this fight scene for a very low-budget film, like, Like what, what are we talking budget wise? Eight million. Like relatively low. It was video on demand. Like. Ah, oh, so good. There's there's super soldiers. It's not I mean <laughs> I was about to say, they're super soldiers, it's not unrealistic. But no, it's it's the reason that they're able to move so fast and punch so hard is that they're they're superhuman. Um, that was that was the the point of it. Um, eh, that's that's pretty low for for an action movie. I was buying it. They're super soldiers. He's he's like. He's got, like, Captain America power we're talking here. I know, and I was thinking that Pyro Guy, too. I was thinking that, like, definitely giving the raid with Bat Boy. And, oh, man. Oh, I want to watch Raid 2 now. Oh, Raid 2 is just such a fucking... Oh. All right, let's watch something drastically worse. Last year, one of your CIA Shepherd teams infiltrated a maximum security prison. Their target was an operative... Identified by the code name Maras. That's not how you do a match shot. You want it to be in actual in the same placement and everything. All I want to know is the name of the man who led the Oh quiet Kitsune. Oh the raid two is one of the greatest fucking action movies of all time oh it, raid 2 goes it's just so stupid hard like like don't get me wrong raid 1 great classic phenomenal film still still holds up the raid 2 is a masterful cornucopia of martial arts mayhem like it is one of the most grueling violent intensely well shot and choreographed action films ever made like it is just a, a smorgasbord um love me some raid 2 and then if you if you like that you can wash it down with uh we are the night i guess we're in for a long night because i don't know shit. that was bad Einstein's team was tasked with retrieving this man this feels like this feels like a fake movie like this feels like a fake movie made for a like a, in inside of a movie like somebody who would be making a movie in a movie better off an agency asset investigating a new radical separatist group in Estonia we have just under two hours to figure out how to get inside that warehouse find Fedorov and get the fuck out in one piece. Look around you, Frost. Does this look like headquarters to you? This looks and sounds like a bullshit rush job. I have no idea what's happening, and this entire thing has been just exposition. It really does. It, oh my god, I left the stove on. It. It is giving Tropic Thunder beginning uh, trailers. enough to send spies into my country and as you can see they have failed miserably ryan drake ryan drake are you dog okay you're 
timing the music to the, the trailer entirely wrong. Better hopes this isn't a trap. Because if those assholes don't kill you, I will the only Okay, that, I thought that guy was like his friend from the way they were talking. This is so confusing. People die today, those fuckers. All of them. A Ryan Drake story. That is fucking rough. That's... Zero percent wokeness, zero percent modern audiences, zero percent, zero percent ambition, zero percent acting, zero percent comedy. Okay, I love that. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> oh my, somebody said it in the comments. This looks like a movie trailer you'd see inside an actual movie when they need a fake trailer to be shown on TV. <laughs> oh man, that's pretty great. I kind of like that. <laughs> I bet Drinker is going to be awful less critical of movies after this comes out. Is it? Is it though? This would be amazing if it was parody. Whoo, buddy. Okay, let's uh, let's wash that pile of piss down with raid to. Uh, we gotta. Mm, okay, do we want bathroom fight goes hard? Ooh, kitchen scene. Okay, we got we gotta watch Bad Boy and Hammer Girl, right? Like those those are the two we gotta watch. Like, just the, the movement, the choreography, like, it don't, it don't get better than the raid. Like, I'm sorry, it doesn't. What I wouldn't give to fucking see this in theaters again, man. Like, like, I, I don't, I think the reason they haven't made a Raid 3 is that they just, they can't. Like, they know they can't. Like, just constantly flowing between the characters throughout the whole thing. Perfect action move. Oh god, it's so fucking good. <laughs> oh my god. And that's like one of ten fights that are that good in that movie. Oh fuck, man. <laughs> they haven't made a raid three because actors haven't recovered from their injuries yet. 
That might be true. Larry Fishman, True Lies is the best action film of the 90s. Terminator 2 came out in the 90s. Wait, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah, Zach Fletcher. That's a really good way to actually put it. Um, the cinematic equivalent of a fine scotch. Like, it is It is so... And that's the, the great thing about The Raid that's made it such a great, like, a, a beloved film. Is that it's... Like, it's not just immaculately shot and choreographed. The acting is really good. The writing is really good. The fucking, like, it is, it's a wonderful piece of cinema, aside from the, the violent action. It is just beautifully shot. Like, it's so fucking good. T Terminator 2 auto wins, it's unfair. Yeah, but have you seen Terminator 2? I mean, like, Terminator 2 is one of those movies, much like the first Terminator, that you, over, if you haven't watched it in a while, you go into it and you're like, is this really as good as I remember? And then you walk out of it, you're like, no, it's fucking... That's so good. That's really good. It's like he went down and the, the thumbs up and the that's so fucking real good. Oh. As and like T T two is a pretty good, like I would put Raid two up there with T two. Like like if we're talking the Mount Rushmore of action movies. <sighs> Terminator 2, The Raid 2. I would say Mad Max Fury Road. And... I'd say maybe Jackie Chan, Legend of the Drunken Master. Like, if we're, if we're talking just pure, punchy, punchy action movies. All right, let's go into peak trans. The crazy things I saw in the trans community. Why do I call them a cult? Jesus Christ, I used to use preferred pronouns until I realized I was endorsing groomer behavior. The TQ act like a cult. My brother in Christ, you are in the cult. I used to respect people until I thought they were all groomers. What? YouTube is, I know, right? Recommending my own live stream. Um... Yeah, oh, you know what? Hard Boiled might be up there too. Fuck. Hard Boiled is really good. If we're if we're talking if we're talking classic woo, Hard Boiled goes hard. Kung Fu Hustle. I like Kung Fu Hustle. I get Kung Fu Hustle confused with um <laughs> Even though I know it's not at all the same. I've seen both of them and I know they're not at all the same. I get it confused with Kung Pao. Enter the fist. Um, <laughs> but I, I like Kung Fu Hustle quite a bit. Um, thoughts on Hardcore Henry. Uh, <sighs> I liked it for what it was doing. Um, I think it's... I think Hardcore Henry is a cool experiment that goes way off the like it goes off the deep end in a fun way but not in a way that i'm like oh fuck i need to watch this again like the the first person gimmick ran out for me and i at, at some point i was like man i would have liked to have seen this in not first person um it's it's a hell of a movie like don't get me wrong the, the stuff they pull off is really cool but like I, it, I don't know. I found it a little bit more grating than I otherwise I, I might have liked. Um, and we're somebody talking about John Wick. John Wick, hell of a hell of a series. I just watched all the John Wick movies this year. John Wick Four, oh, still so fucking good. Oh my god, the I. 
when I watched the scene with the Dragon's Breath shotgun in theaters, I was laughing like a child. <laughs> just watching him, just like, poof, poof, and watching it from this top down, like Hotline Miami view, and it's just blowing away entire chunks of this floor. And I was like, oh my, like, what a. Mwah. Um, yeah, I need to get back to uh, Graham the Lamb. I need to get back to Cult of the Lamb because I played like two hours of Cult of the Lamb and I meant to, I meant to go back to it, but I never did. Evening, Dustin the Damned. Oh, Dread is, Dread goes hard. Dread goes hard. Uh, Mighty Mulatto, Charles Bronson. I like Death Wish. Like I like, I unironically like the third Death Wish movie. Oh, that's a very, very goofy film that's like kind of okay. Somebody asked about the choreography in Blade 1 2. I need to watch Blade 2 because here, here's what keeps happening to me. <coughs> this has happened to me three times now where I've gotten a partner and I'm like, yo, you've never seen Blade. You need to watch Blade. We're going to watch it and I'm going to do my best not to quote everything until the very end when Wesley Snipes goes, some motherfucker's always trying to ice skate uphill. And then I'll, I'll say it with Wesley Snipes. But other than that, I won't quote it. And then Blade 2, I need to keep watching Blade 2. Because I, I really love Blade 2. Uh, but, like, like, I've seen it before. I, I watched it a lot as a kid. But, like, it's been so long since I've revisited it. Like, I completely forgot that movie not only has a baby Norman Reedus, but a baby Donnie Yen. Nope, Lane Kaplan, that line is perfect. It's it's a, mwah. It's, it's a perfect, it's a perfect... This film was from a perfect scene. So good. It's like when when Blade at the very beginning breaks into the hospital and the dude runs off and the cops shoot him and he goes, Motherfucker, you out of your damn mind? Like It's so good. And you know what? Here's the thing. I like Blade 3. I'm gonna admit it. I'm not going to I'm not going to hide it anymore. Also, uh yeah, Donnie, yeah, we've been talking about Jackie Chan. We haven't even talked about Donnie Yen. Like we haven't even talked about Donnie Yen, like Eat Man? Fucking come on. Or Eat Man was it I think was it 4 where he fights Mike Tyson? Uh but no, Eat Man 2, the the table scene. Okay, wait. All right, one more, one more. Uno Mas on the on action movie scenes. Because I, I gotta show, I know, I know y'all haven't seen the table. Everybody hasn't seen the table scene. Oh, that's so good. Oh. <laughs> I love that. Oh my god. <laughs> Two Face plays 45. Do streams normally get this off topic? Sometimes when I'm when I'm watching dumb bullshit and people get me off topic. <laughs> oh. Uh. So good. This seems more productive, TBA. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm stalling for time, so I don't have. But we're we're gonna watch this. Let's. Let's go into this. We make the topics. That's right. We make the rules. How did how did we get here from Crowder? Um, hi, Ryson. Um, somebody. I'm I'm gonna blame Chat. Well, no. How did we get here, Chat? Because we were talking about. I don't know. We got to talking about action movies, and then. Oh, that's right. Okay, I I remember how we were talking about Critical Drinker. We were talking about the the grifting space that's how we got because we got to critical drinker from the quartering critical drinker made his own stupid action movie and then we got to talking about how low budget action movies can be good because i showed the uh gym fight scene from universal soldier day of reckoning and then i watched his shitty trailer and then we watched the raid 2 and then now we're just uh now i have to get into gender critical shit because we're just doing it up um, Jerry Sanders, five dollars from Jerry Sanders. Take my money for reminding me to rewatch these movies. Yeah, absolutely do. Like, yo, there's some good, good action movies. We were talking about a shitty ass movie and we went to some real movies. Yeah, that's how I do. 
I've it's no because we're the the real truth is that once you pass once we pass like the two and a half to three hour mark on my streams there is a 100% chance that my pills have worn off for the day <laughs> so uh I am just I'm it's like I don't know if anybody remembers like a couple was it a month or two ago I did like a 45 minute tangent on the Muppet PlayStation 1 games music and how good the music was on Muppet PlayStation 1 games. Um, and I, I talked about that for like a, an hour. Um, so yeah, that, that is my palette clean kung fu strong. All right, let's go into this. I do want to read, actually. I want to read some more of those comments because those were very funny. That teacher was fired. My adolescent sister came out as a boy a while back. And and I want to give strong, strong content warning. Ryson, you've never heard of Muppets on PS1? Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm. I'm going to... Mm. I got to I got to do it. I got to do it. Okay, we we have to go down the rabbit hole. Jerry Sanders, thank you very much again. Uh All right, so we need to go we need to do Muppet Monster Adventure first. Cuz the OST goes dummy hard for Muppet Monster Adventure. Like I don't, I don't think... Everybody doesn't understand. The the music for this PlayStation 1 horror platformer... Minor key. Wait, wait till it goes off the chain here. It goes off the chain. Okay, now let's see. We got we got other tracks because this this entire soundtrack, dummy good. Oh, this one's, oh, this one's, this one's funky with it, too. I don't know what any of these instruments are. I don't know what things make these sounds. They're just ridiculous. Theremin, yeah. And then there's this weird sound in the background coming up here that I, I love. I love. Here, here it breaks down. It's breaking it down. And then like, oh, I don't know if y'all can hear that bass line kicking in. McDonald's straw. <laughs> Gosh, do you right. It is a McDonald's straw. Thank you for gifting a tier one sub, Renaru. Or I am mute to Renaru. All right, let's go to Grave Matters. Is that the one I'm thinking of? 
rubbing a balloon. All right, let's go to, all right. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, God damn it. I started it too early. All right. No, that's a boss fight. Here we go, here we go. This is the one. This is like the track from this song, y'all. Like this is the track. I need, I need you to stay with me, have some faith. This guy made the music for Lost? That's kind of incredible. God damn, he received an... The dude who made this received an Oscar for Up and Emmy for Lost and three Grammy Awards. Oh my God, greatness from small beginnings. Giacchino made this? Oh, I know Giacchino, shit. I mean, like, I don't know Giacchino, but you know. Here, here comes, here comes, here comes the drop. Here comes the drop. Like, this is like fair music now, but it, it, it gets going again. Gets going again. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Uh. Fuck yes. Oh. All right, now one more game. One more game, and then that's it. I swear to God, everybody stay with me. No, Muppet Adventure Racing. Muppet Adventure Racing, the other banger. Oh, Muppet Race Mania. Why did I think Adventure Racing? Am I thinking of Hooters? Is there a Hooters Adventure? Oh, I'm thinking of Beetle. The Beatles Adventure Racing. All right, The Swamp. Now I need I need you to understand something. This was a Muppet PlayStation 1 kart racing game. A kart racing game on the PlayStation 1 with Muppets. And this song would not be out of place in Red Dead Redemption 2. It is a great game. All right, so that's the, the thing with the Muppet Adventure, or Muppet Race Mania is that it has a range.
All right, now we got it. We gotta mix it up again. We gotta mix it up again. No, oh, that's not the one I wanted. That's pretty good though. I think I actually used this in a video at some point. You like jazz? Ooh. Ooh. Mmm. And this one, this one goes hard. This is like, this next one is like a Final Fantasy boss fight. Listen to this shit. Listen to this. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I am so sorry! Willow has raided me with a party of 139. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mizutaku. Uh, thank you, everybody, for following. We did just get raided. Trans rights. Um, <laughs> what a perfect time. What a perfect time to get raided. When I sorry, now my face is all red and I look like a jackass. Um getting raided while watching our Muppet Adventure uh, Muppet Race Mania soundtrack deep dive. So give me give me a second everybody. Don't go anywhere. Cuz I got two more and then we'll get back to actual videos, I promise. This one goes goes pretty hard, but the one I really wanted was it space? Yeah, I think it's secret uh, base the one that I want. Hey. Oh yeah, this one. Mmm. Mmm. This one, this one has a sick ass. Yeah, oh my gosh, Prince Morgan. Oh, I can't, oh, I can't go over it all again because we just went over like, <laughs> we just went over like five or six tracks from two different Muppet games, but I'm begging you to check out the soundtracks for Muppet Race Mania and Muppet Monster Adventure on PlayStation 1, two of the most underrated bangers on the system that came out around the time the PS2 came out, so nobody's heard of them. But listen, listen to the way this goes in. And it, it keeps going, it, it's building up, it's building up. Stay with me, y'all. It's like a perfect dark soundtrack. Oh, so good. Anyway. The only person who knows PS1 games very well is Kid Icarus. I know, I know PS1 games pretty well. Like what, what PS1, <laughs> here's, okay, so here's the thing. I know PS1 games very well, but um, only in context of remembering vague concepts. Like I remember, ah, oh, what was that Dungeons and Dragons fighting game that sucked ass? Or Cardinal Sin. Well, that's not, that's, that's an actual game. Or that Wu-Tang game. Or who remembers Blaster Master blasting again? Zombie Lizard 218. I was gone for 15 minutes. Now we're listening to Muppet video game music. Um, no, it was not. It's not um, Baldur's Gate or Dark Alliance. I God, what? Okay, I swear to God, I'm not gonna. I'm all right. We're going into this, but I need to know now. It's 
It's like Warriors of something. Yep, there we go. Iron and Blood Warriors of Ravenloft. The Dungeons and Dragons, the dark side of 3D fighting. It's not a good game. It's um it looks like this. <laughs> it's not Iron and Blood, yeah. It's it's a it's a bad video game. It's like this is like the era era of this is like a post um god what Clay Fighter 64 and a half. Okay. It's fine. Keep making excuses. Okay. Now I'm serious. I'm going to go I'm going to fill my water chat. I need to fill my water cuz I've been I've been exerting myself talking about Muppet Monster Adventure. I'm going to go fill my my Godzilla cup and then I'm going to run to the restroom and then we'll be right back and we're going to talk about the gender cult. Okay. Quantum Deity. Deity. Why did I say that? Quantum Deity. Thank you for subscribing with Prime. Laughing so hard you cry. <laughs> Hello, Doug. Hello, Doug. You are fine. Okay, we're back. I have Godzilla cup has been filled. My my sweet Godzilla cupware that I got at AMC seeing Godzilla X Kong yesterday. Mm. Good night, uh, Nicholas Kim Coppola. Oh hell yeah, Def Jam Battle for NY. Cat, you were fine. <laughs> Joseph Weber. <laughs> Joseph Weber, how do people have bad thumbnails for videos? Like, did they did that themselves and I literally... I mean, some people just don't have an aptitude for... You see, here's the thing. This thumbnail is bad, but I see the vision. Like, it's it's the picture that's bad. It's the picture in the background that's bad and they put a shitty Photoshop filter on it. But like, otherwise the the framing, eh, the framing could be tightened up a little bit. But like, I see what they're going for. It's, it's like, you know, it's like that old joke. Some people have a way with words. Some people not have way. Destrina, thank you for following. Uh, Drax's Storm Scale, you actually did miss the party because we just spent about 40 minutes uh, going over Muppet playstation one soundtracks and right before that we were watching kick-ass action movie scenes um did i have fun at the movie i had so much fun i had... not only did i uh buy the cup i also bought this is the only time i've done this by the way i'm not a person who buys like all the the cups and merchant shit unless it's godzilla um so not only did i buy the cup with it had a little a little figgy on it but then i also got the godzilla plushie and the Godzilla Kong um, uh, bucket. Uh, Rice and Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. There's a new Godzilla movie out, so I am, I I watched it, and I'm going to see it again tomorrow. 
Feet Monster, does anyone else hate punks of Tawny Phil? What beef do you have with the small rodent? <laughs> what? I mean, Ryson, do you... Well, I'll, I'll ask that question later. Do you want to go see uh, Godzilla X-Kong? Oh, I hate this. Oh, this is... Ooh. This is the bad place. I don't... I don't know what that means, right? Hi, everyone. It's not uncommon for people on opposing sides of an issue about which they feel passionately to accuse the other side of being a cult. And I trust that when we do this, we know that we're not using it. Oh, okay. So she, she used that picture of herself because it's literally all she has. It's the only framing. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> it's just, it's the only picture she had. Okay. What am I looking at? We are just getting, yeah, Banana Brains. I, I just rewatched The Good Place. Uh, and here's the thing. I don't think, I, I know I have watched through The Good Place at least twice. I think this might have been the first time I actually watched like the last couple episodes, which are like just devastating. Um, and so good. Well, Ryson, uh, you should hit me up about that then. Let me do that. Uh, speed her up just a and little the bit. Official definition of what a cult actually. So chaotic kitten uh, on Twitch saying I don't I still don't understand how gender identity is a her, how gender is an ideology. They have to call it. it it's the same thing that i was just thinking about this the other day it's the exact same thing that christians like hardcore christians do in trying to give a reason why they can disprove atheists is that they say like when you hear christians say well atheism is a religion like you you just believe in a different god you just believe in evolution it's like no that's it's literally it's the it's the opposite of the thing you're saying like it's not it's not that that's very much a, a similar thing here it is that like it is it needs to be called an ideology because they do actually have an ideology and they need to have an ideological opponent to go after and if it's just people trying to live their lives and they're trying to impede that well that's not a very good that's not a very good target we're not gonna get people on our side so they have to form this idea of gender ideology and the gender cult so that they can get more people on their side. It's it's why all of their shit revolves around when you see it on Twitter and stuff. It revolves around these ridiculous, outdated notions of what trans people are. Instead of actual representation of what they are and what they look like. Yeah, Patrick W. Jr. is someone who argues with theists. I always hear that shit. It's it's super uh annoying like it's it's just like it is it's moving a goalpost it's not even moving a goalpost it's moving to a home field advantage it is it is an attempt to shift an argument to a place where they are more comfortable making it from because they've realized that they are not on equal footing and they need to make it appear more equal and mr yago the Godzilla cups were cool. I had two. I think I'm going to try and get a Kong cup tomorrow because here, this, these new Godzilla cups uh, coincide with me um, needing new glassware. So I briefly considered trying to go online and hunt down um, a bunch of the 1997 Matthew Broderick Godzilla. Uh, they had four cups that were at Taco Bell. They sold them at Taco Bell. Um, and they were like extra large drink cups. And I, I could probably get those for an okay price. No, uh, I did get the Godzilla vs. Kong popcorn bucket. It's it's a pretty, it's a cool bucket. It comes in two parts. It's, 
I did eat all the popcorn. What we mean is that many of those on the other side behave in what we see as a cultish manner. It would perhaps be more accurate to call them a pseudo cult. I know quite a lot about cults, not because I've ever been near one in real life, but they are a subject on which, just out of interest, I've done quite a bit of reading and research. And I'm going to state at this early stage that I know there are important differences with actual cults as defined by academic researchers, um, those providing information and support to people affected by cults. Okay, so this, this should actually be interesting because I, too have an interest in studying cults, cult-like behavior, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see how she, because she's already starting off by saying, oh, we have a tendency to point a finger at the other side. I'm interested in seeing how she tries to dispel the ideas that her ideas are, like how, how she's going to try and say, Others are a cult, but she's definitely not. All those involved in deep research is mum's net. I wouldn't be surprised. Cult. There is a difference between officially designated cults and what I and many others call. Crane was taken. Why don't people get actual cult specialists to talk about how LGBTQ is a cult? Probably because they they wouldn't they wouldn't do it. They would be like, nah, it's not really. <laughs> like, and here here's another thing. Um, it was. Hi, uh, Libs of TikTok shared something the other day that was, um, I don't remember who, it was, it was somebody else sharing something that was, uh, proof that people who were gay had a history of abuse or like people turned gay because they were abused as a kid. And then when you actually looked up that person, he's been, oh, what the hell? Hey, what happened? What happened, baby? Hey, are you okay? Come here. You're okay. Oh, hey, baby. You're okay. What happened, honey? Oh. That was my dog. She is underneath me shaking right now. Hey there, sweetheart. You're okay. I think you did. Did you bite your big dumb tongue? Yeah, is that what happened? She was just chewing on something and she just went, just <laughs> let out a big yelp. And it was to the point that even the cat came over and checked on her. That was actually really cute. The cat like walked up and made sure you gave her a sniff. Are you okay? Are you okay? She's she's not shaking anymore. She's under under my leg. I think she bit her tongue. Yeah, Rowan Ash, I think she was chewing on something and she bit her tongue because she's been licking a lot. You okay? Yeah, you're okay. And now she's just under my leg sitting here. You're okay. You just got a big tongue. Hey, you're okay. You're okay. Let me see that tail wag. Let me see that tail wag. You know what I think you'd like? You know what I think you'd like? Do you want a carrot? Do you want a carrot? Let's go get a carrot. Come on. Let's go get a carrot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah. Let's show everybody on camera. Let's show everybody on camera how good you are. Let's show everybody on camera. Yes. Come here. Come here. Come here. Up. Uppies. No. Come on. Ups. Ups. No, no. No. Come up. Hey. Come up. 
are you doing, goofball? Come here. Come here. Come here. You want... Yes. You take nice... No. I want you to take nice up here on camera so everybody can see you good. Come on. Oops. You take... She won't take nice on camera. Come here. Over here. Come up. Up. Take nice. That is not nice. That's very... All right, take nice. Take nice. Good girl. Munch, 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 munch. We need to watch this before we watch Smug Projection. And now you can hear her just munch, 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 munch. Yeah, she's doing, she's all fine now. She's got her carrots. My dog loves carrots. I don't know. I think I gave them to her when she was a puppy, and now she just loves them so much. So, like, anytime I, and I eat carrots all the time as a snack. Oh, you want more? She say, more carrots. More. You're fine, you big baby. You were playing that up like you were actually hurt. She said, carrot, hey. Rudo. <laughs> All right, take nice. Take nice. Nice. Take nice. Come on. Come take nice. <laughs> that was barely nice. Okay. Dog cam. <laughs> Scare the hell out of me, dog. Oh my god. Like I get, I get so. Uh, Yenzo, how true is it? Carrots make your eyes better. It's, it's definitely true. Have you not seen the film Shoot 'Em Up? The documentary Shoot 'Em Up. Oh my goodness. My neighbor's talk loves ham. We throw slices. She catches them and swallows them in one bite. Yeah, that sounds right. I don't, I don't have anything else for you, dog. She's sniffing around the desk. She's like, I know you have more carrot. I know you have more carrot. Gib. Hey, my love. Hey, my love. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, goofball? Did I go back down now? I just sniffing for carrot. Okay. I don't want goof. I keep putting carrots in my eyes and they're not help. All right. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this thing. The gender cult the gender ideology cult, the gender identity cult, the transgender cult, all of these terms describe pretty much the same people. And there are some things about those people, what they say and how they behave that I find so sinister that I feel that calling them a cult is justifiable and I'm about to explain why. And please note, those I describe as cultists are those who promote or defend gender ideology. People often and here's the thing. They, they often like to draw this delineation where they will say, you know, I don't have a problem. And this is, again, this is just another cover so that they can say, oh, I don't hate trans people. I don't hate trans people. This is, this is, and again, I'm not to compare the plight of trans people to black people or people of color in any respect because it's entirely different social structures and problems. However, it's a lot like when somebody says, oh, I don't, I don't have a problem with black people. Just like, you know, just like not those kind of people. There's something white people do all the fucking times. Yeah, it's dust in the dam. It's hatred with extra steps. It's like they essentially, they want them to fit into their tiny little rigid boxes. They want them to be, every trans person to be Blair White and Buck Angel. And any deviation from that 
well, you're you're spreading ideology. It's like, no, fuck you. And say trans people. Mikey Motorcycle, thank you for following. Sort of I haven't said they are. Plenty Raven Nightwing, thank you for following. People do not promote gender ideology. What did I say? I don't miss. I'm sorry, I don't. And in fact, the person I first heard use the term trans cult back in 2017 was Miranda Yardley, a trans identifying male, and he was using it in condemnation of. See, this already shows that you're coming from a bad a place of bad faith, the fact that you are intentionally, purposefully fucking misgendering somebody, you're just being a dick. Like, you're just being a dick. Those who push the ideology. In my experience, the majority... It's showing you don't actually... In you don't actually respect them. <laughs> Lydia Rose, thank you for super chatting. $1.99 for Gib Dog Carrot. Where's my dog? Where'd you go? Hey, goofball. What are you doing back there? I see your little tail wagon. What are you doing? Let me put your bed out here. Let me put your bed right next to my... Oh, you're stuck. Okay, I see. All right, you're stuck. You're a big stick. This is not for you. Her sister, the cat, is so concerned. She's hanging around her after she yelped. They're really cute together. They actually, it's really sweet how they love each other. Like sometimes when I come back from walks, Lady will go over to Miss, the cat, and Miss will like lick her head. It's just very cute. They're just little goofballs. I love them. The cultish way I'm about to describe are not even trans-identifying. Okay, maybe nowadays many call themselves non-binary because that's an easy way. Ah, we're getting envy phobia. I love, this is one of my favorite things where people who have no knowledge of non-binary people will say, just like throw shit out there that like, oh, people will just call themselves non-binary and don't do anything else to be trans. They don't change anything about their presentation. And it's like, who are you? To oh, my pupper just laid down on the little bed. She's so good. Um, like, who are you to say that? Like, what? what do you know? Ezzie Bella, thank you very much. Leave no phobia unturned. Yeah, essentially. Way to be in with the in crowd without actually doing any. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Who who wants to bet? Sorry, I keep pausing. Who wants to bet? We're gonna get. Who wants to bet that we're gonna get a. Um, a mention of Abigail Schreier's book because I'm already I'm already seeing. That they're, uh, MBs, they're just doing it to be hip with the kids. It has, you know, again, they have to completely ignore people who come out as non-binary or gender fluid or change their identity well into their 40s, their 50s, their 30s. They have to act like, they have to follow these, these talking points, much like Abigail Schreier's book that is saying, oh, all these, all these girls are being taken from us by these non-binaries. Okay. Right, I won't, I won't pause all the way through it. To themselves. Here is a typical example of what is said. Trans people aren't a cult. If any group is a cult, it... Very funny taking just random ass Twitter accounts. Like, it... Look. We've looked... We look at a lot of Twitter stuff. We've, we've looked at Twitter accounts. But if I'm going to provide evidence for my point from a Twitter account, I'm either A, going to do a lot. Going to have multiple accounts showing that shit. B, which you'll notice she's cut off here, I'm going to show how much it was interacted with or how much it's spread. And C, I'm going to show somebody who's prominent, who's well-known, like a Matt Walsh or a Haya Reichick. You know, if they say something dumb... That's a good example of somebody saying something dumb on Twitter, if it if it supports my argument. A random ass person is not a great example because people will just log on to Twitter and say shit. Um, I don't know if y'all have been on Twitter, but people just people just be logging on and saying shit sometimes. So maybe maybe don't. It's okay. Oh, they'll figure it out. 
it's GC people. Of course, they would say that, and it's up to them to argue that case. Given how diverse we GC people are in terms of our politics and beliefs, given the fact that we do actually present arguments backed by evidence, and given how much we squabble and criticise each other publicly, good luck with that. I would call all of the real cults deliberate cults. Of course, they don't call themselves cults because that's derogatory, but they were set up for a specific purpose and they very cynically recruit people to fulfill that purpose. They are inward looking and they are very much about acquiring wealth and other nice things for the leadership. Very often they start with just one charismatic leader. Okay. So already you're not describing trans people. Who, who is the, I'm, I'm very curious if she's going to say what, who the one charismatic leader is. Cause like, I can tell you, quote unquote charismatic, uh, I can tell you who it is for gender crits. Y'all have a couple. Y'all got JK Rowling and, uh, what's her face? Um, Posey Parker. Although the promotion of gender ideology in every sphere of life is very deliberate, I would call the gender cult maybe an accidental cult. I don't think those who fund... Are we already... She's already backing off of the cult thing and saying like, okay, well, it doesn't actually align to these things. Very good. Okay. ...and push ideology at the highest levels, necessarily intended to create the armies of mindless, moronic, and violently inclined automatons that we see protesting everything they perceive to be in opposition to their... Cre Jesus, mindless automatons. Nothing like the... Who is the, the gender-critical lady who just, like, flashed her hoo-ha to Parliament? Yeah, nothing like that. Nothing like weird, unhinged weirdos like that. Nothing like the people who send me death threats on the daily. Like I, I just, I just had a death threat today, where somebody was like, "You deserve to swing, freak, or something." Yeah, not at all, not at all. Violent on the, uh, the gender crit side. Read and who are ultimately harming it. I came across this tweet by Luke Anderson, who is a trans-identifying female who years ago won the um, reality TV show Big Brother UK. And here, Luke is showing the Nazified version of the misnamed progress flag and saying... Hand on heart, in my opinion, this is what it's coming to. I don't, I don't know who this person is. Does, again, on heart, in my you'll notice it doesn't say when or how much he was interacted with or any pushback or anything like there's just no more information here which is a, a choice my opinion this is what it's coming to you can probably imagine the reaction to that from the kind of people luke was referring to yeah i wonder why people wouldn't take kindly to co-opting a hate symbol that was used to murder six million people and trying to say that people whose rights are currently being stripped from them are actually Nazis. Hmm. I wonder why people might, I wonder why that might give them pause. Could, could, could it be? Uh, the DJB, pretty sure the original of that came from 4chan. I absolutely wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Here's an example, replete with irony. What a disgustingly evil, heartless, distasteful thing to post. The LGBTQ plus community don't single people out. Is this guy for real? The one... Th um, now, remember again, I want you to, to remember how they're... Um, how only the LGBTs are the angry, mad violent automatons as she's just like she can't even finish a sentence without freaking out anyway continue thing that the gender lunatics do unfailingly and again a disclaimer a lot of people who do it aren't any part of the alphabet soup in reality they are straight allies but one particularly deranged and despicable thing they do is single people out and try their best to destroy them are we going to get cancel culture are we going to get cancel culture here Okay, they don't commit atrocities by putting my... Okay, so they, they don't do the thing, but 
they do things that I don't like. Ergo, they're the same as people who murdered six million people. Minorities into gas chambers, but it's not as if some of them wouldn't if they could. The hate they express for people who oppose them are so very often expressed in terms of wanting us dead. <laughs> Again, Google user, one Google user. Give me, give me multiples. Give me multiples here. Turfs are literally the worst slime to congeal on the surface of the earth. You'll be in the gas chambers soon enough, though. I wonder why this person is anonymous. You've ah, it's one. It's just one example from somebody with no name, just Google user, and that surely can never be can never be faked. That is absolutely <laughs> above suspicion. Great, just fantastic journalistic integrity got this all wrong especially when literal nazis are supporting posey parker and her gc cult but you don't single anyone out right saying that posey parker is being supported by nazis is not like simply naming somebody is not especially a public figure is not singling out what you're doing by looking at literal single tweets from random trans people that's singling out. Those people are posting to an intended audience and you're going, ah, look at look at all these, all the transes believe this. A person holding a rally that Nazis attended and she gets up and speaks with Nazis in attendance and the Nazis agree with her? Yeah, maybe they do deserve to be singled out. Also, as Patrick Dune noted, you're not even gonna really talk about the the Nazis? Like you just, she really just skipped right over that. Okay. They have turned out like this because although they have swallowed the ideology hook, line, and sinker, which means that they bought into the idea that transgenderism is normal and simply another example of human diversity and that trans identifying people are a marginalized and oppressed group akin. So she does understand, like here, here's the thing. She, she has heard these arguments. She does understand that trans people are a minority and that they're being oppressed, but she simply doesn't agree. <laughs> like, she just wants to continue hating someone. To homosexuals and ethnic or cultural minorities, although they may have bought in to that narrative, they can't actually argue rationally and coherently for any of it. So instead, they lie, they parrot... You, you just, you stated it yourself. You stated it yourself. It's, it's actually very simple. Like what? They can't be coherent about it. Surely somewhere you can watch a scientist talk about these things. Watch any of the people who study these things. Bye, snail Facile girl. Slogans, they demonize their opposition, particularly women trying to keep. Now, again, demonizing the opposition. The, the example she showed of demonizing the opposition was somebody calling out Posey Parker for having Nazis at her rally. Um, when she has done nothing for seven minutes, but literally make ad hominem and straw man attacks against the concept of trans people. It's like, like I don't, there, there are certain things I don't like to repeat because they, I think they get said too much. Um, but, oh my gosh, Battletech Emily, thank you very much for rating. Like every accusation is a confession really really rings true with gender critical people it really really does men out of our single sex spaces jobs and sports now let's consider the things they say and do Firstly, grooming and indoctrination. When I say grooming, I'm not necessarily talking about grooming for the purpose of sexual exploitation. Okay, so you're taking a word that has actual serious meaning, a word that people should actually be wary of and actually know about to prevent it from happening so you can recognize it when it happens and you're simply 
using it as an own. You are simply taking the context and importance out of it. Cool. Nothing bad could happen there. Exploitation and abuse, though I'm not ruling it out. Grooming means persuading someone vulnerable to trust you and preparing them for an activity by putting ideas into their head. So not quite the same as indoctrination. That's, that's maybe one of the worst definitions of grooming I've ever heard. That is so... Yeah, no, Krenna, she's changed the definition of cult. No, not only has she changed the definition of cult, but she continues to be like, well, it's it, it's kind of like this, but it's not really, and so it's, it's kind of a different kind of cult. Yeah, no, Prince Morgan, grooming, isn't that like schools or parenting? Like, you... You're, you're describing people just trying to teach kids. Like, the way you described it is just, eh, kids might not like learning sometimes. Like, what? Which it's, it's, people... Well, and Lantha, that's exactly the point. It needs to be broad so that they can fit it over their definition. Yeah, also, I don't know, Ryson, uh, UK women say no to gender ideology. I think it's just to fill out space because her her setup is just like this, this flag draped over like a bookcase in a white corner of the room. I don't know. The whole setup, it, ma it makes me sad to look at, honestly. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it to accept <coughs> ideas uncritically and without question. Real cults use very crude brainwashing techniques. I think what happens in the gender cult to teenagers and young adults is less crude, more insidious. In Again, cases, so even not like a real cult. But the results are not that different. I would argue that every celebrity who virtue signals with their public pronouncements of support are participating in grooming behavior, just as they used to say uh, that every smoker is a recruiter of smokers. When I was a kid, all the coolest celebrities seemed to be smoking a cigarette whenever they were photographed, whenever I saw them being interviewed on TV. They made it look glamorous. So now we've got the likes of Emily Watson and Daniel Radcliffe and loads of others making acceptance of a deeply regressive ideology. Deeply regressive ideology. I... Do you think... Smoking is the... No, no, they do. They. I was going to say, like, do you think smoking is the same as being trans? And they would say that. They would say, yeah, smoking is... Like, it's just as harmful. It's, it's not as harmful to your body as being trans because you mutilate yourself and all that other dumb shit. Um, Rice and grandma accidentally filmed in vertical and needs to fill the screen. I wouldn't be surprised because, well, I don't know. This other side is weird because it, like, it has shading down at the bottom. So I can't tell if it's from a different... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Or is that... Oh, no, that's just this YouTube. Okay, no, you're like... right. Sing if you're glad to be gay. It isn't. That's just, oh, it's not like saying you're glad to be gay. Okay. Uh, how? How is, how is supporting, how is supporting another member of the queer community different from supporting one just because you don't like one of them? It's like saying, if you feel there's something wrong with you, you're probably right and you can do something very drastic to your body to change it and it might make you feel better though you can't know beforehand if it will or not well that's i mean that's just not true like you you can do this entire conversation is based on the assumption that being transgender which is it's already funny to me that she seems to think that um like kids are just identifying that way for the heck of it but thus far this entire video is laboring under the delusion that being transgender means you go and i i hate this assumption because it's so not accurate to any trans experience you can just go and the first thing you do is get your breast cut off there's no there's no waiting period breast cut off um according to them there's no waiting period. There's no hormone therapy. There's no therapy involved at all. And it's like, that's that's not true. That's not the lived experience of thousands of people. What are you talking about? 
celebrities and indeed politicians are not doing this with young people's best interests at heart. They are doing it for their own best interests as they perceive them. But the worst groomers are trans-identifying. Okay, again, we've got um, <coughs> just random people on, on TikTok. Like, I, okay. T-cell. <laughs> Welcome to the sisterhood. Welcome to the sisterhood, says a man calling himself Summer to another man. This is one of the most insulting notions I've seen to come out of this. I'm, gosh, she is, like, actually mad. She, like, has a real, like, Resident Evil Village vibe to her. Like, like, you, what's that? What's that one? Does anybody have that video of the the British lady banging on the car window? It's like a, it's like a, it was like a TikTok or something. Um, but she is like just so, like. Yeah, Renaroo. Like she seems super miserable, and not in a way. Not in a way that is like Matt Walsh or other people. Where Matt Walsh seems like. I don't know. There's there's a calmness that hides his cruelty, but she just seems like she, like walks around her house in a huff all day. Like it, like it, like she just. It seems like she's like this all the time. I, I don't. I, there's just something about the way she does it. Maybe the Bilbo Baggins lady. I think so. I think so. This cult. I copped a lot of flack for calling Summer Look a groomer, and still to this day, I'm getting frequent comments saying. <laughs> I called somebody who's just offering positivity and affirmation a uh, sexual predator, and people didn't like that. Summer has a whole account to spread positivity and make people feel comfortable in whatever gender they want, but here you are making whole-ass channels to promote hate towards trans people and excluding them from certain aspects. Your graying hair and remaining life, you choose to hate on someone instead of just enjoying your retired life spreading positivity. You know, you know that one got to her like you know that one made her angry summer was just sharing her life and her stories with everyone it was quite heartwarming content all he's doing is spreading positivity making <coughs> people feel comfortable in whatever gender they want just sharing her life and stories uh, with everyone how heartwarming Comments like these show just how successful this indoctrination is. Talking about genders as if they are lifestyles and about womanhood as if it is some state that you can achieve even if you're a man. I don't understand where they, they come off with these ideas about like, oh, womanhood is just something you can just put on like a costume. And again, like you have, you have no idea the work somebody has to go through and not just physically but mentally and psychologically. Like, since I've started taking E, I've gotten a little bit smaller. Um, just like my, my muscle structure and everything. And because I'm more feminine, I had a moment the other day, the other day, this was a couple months ago, but when I was walking home at night, and I actually, for the first time, felt like, an odd fear at a, a guy walking along the street with me. And that's not because I, I thought like, oh my gosh, you know, he's he's going to rape me or anything. But it's like, like, what if he sees somebody who's feminine walking home alone at night? What if he wants to mug somebody? Like, that's something I didn't have to worry about when I was slightly bigger. And that's that's just a physical on the cover of it type thing. That's, that's a small example. And I, I haven't even changed that much. I'm not even really that feminine. So like the idea that it's just, oh, it's just this easy thing. And then you're just, you're carefree and easy. It's like, no, trans women have to deal with the same sexism that women do. Like it, it's, it's like they wear these struggles as some kind of badge of honor. 
Like, oh, only women can be sexually harassed. It's like, yeah, trans women are. Only women can be hooted at and hollered at on the street. Yeah, trans women are. Like, they, they, you need to have solidarity between feminists and trans women because it, it's, it's the same thing with like most shades of gay people and queer people and trans people. It's like the same people that hate you hate them. Like why, why are you trying to get on those people's good side? <clears throat> like summer look and people are going oh so positive so heartwarming no what would be positive is telling people that they are all good just as they are and if they want to be gender non-conforming in how they express themselves except you don't actually believe that see see here's here's another fun turf talking point is it comes around to, well, yeah, you can just be gender non-conforming, except when people are gender non-conforming, they hate it. They hate when somebody who even identifies as a woman has short hair or a boyish look. They hate when someone who identifies as a man might have nice nails, long hair, makeup, and a beard. Like, they hate that shit. <laughs> like, don't, don't make this up. Uh, okay. ...how they dress, what name they adopt for themselves. If they want to challenge stereotypical expectations of their sex, that's fine. It's probably just a phase anyway. But even if it isn't, it's absolutely... It's probably just a phase anyway. God, what a bitch. ...absolutely fine. Summer look has... Like, again, she, she seems to think only trans people. This is another thing that happens, and I, I blame Abigail Schreier for it. They seem to think trans people are, like, just teenagers. Ooh. Okay. Uh, let me find... Oh, I can't get the link. No! Okay. Hmm. I don't know how I can get the link easily. Let me see if I can just look it up real quick. Ooh, you know what, Ryson, uh, send it. Okay, yes, you got it. I was, I was literally, you read my mind. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let me go to... We're just going to let her talk for a little bit while I do this. Now disappeared from public life. And I'm not sorry because telling kids of one sex that they can be the other sex on the basis of how they feel is a lie. It's wrong. And don't bother justifying it by claiming that sex and gender are different when you can't even define gender in any meaningful way. Here. <laughs> And you can. Like, it is It is the social expectations that are placed upon you based on what people perceive your, your birth sex as. Like, that's why people say it's socially constructed. There. There's, there's gender. It's the social expectations placed upon you based on what people perceive your birth sex as. It's actually super easy. But she'd do, she would do the Matt Walsh thing. Where she would be like, okay, well, what, what does every single one of those words mean? And it's like, okay, you're just being pedantic at a, at a certain point. All right. This is the video I was talking about. Rice knew exactly the one I was talking about, too. Can you not touch my car like that? Can you give me a phone, please? What? Can you give me a phone? I want to send a text. What are you doing sitting outside this house? What are you doing? 
I live here. You don't live here? What are you doing? Can you get your hands off my car, please? No. Please. What are you doing? Leave, go away. What are you doing? Go away. I've been away with the fucking Zimbabwe, you stupid little pimp. Get away from here. A classic, bona fide classic. Um, there's a great cut of that with Resident Evil music behind it. <coughs> Leo Fee, thank you for resubscribing at Tier 1 for six in a row. It's been a wonderful half a year. I hope to have another wonderful half a year ahead. Like, she just reminded me of that. Uh, very similar energy. In like 10, 15 years. That's generous. Monro Bergdorf came under fire a few years ago for encouraging kids to contact him directly for support. Someone to talk to like a big sister. You deserve to be happy. This... Like, like do you hear yourself reading out saying they deserve to be happy and then immediately going, this is blah, 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 like whatever she's going to say. But like... You're disagreeing with the idea that people deserve to be happy. Like, what? It's grooming behavior. <coughs> These people seem to have no sense of what is inappropriate behavior towards kids and what child safeguarding is all about. The worst culprit is Jeffrey Marsh. I want to talk to the kids. Parents, watch the video and then hand the phone over to the So, first off, not a good way to, to show your point by literally showing him say parents watch the video first like you are you're literally showing him advocating child safeguards or i guess i i don't know how jeffrey identifies you're literally showing them advocating child safeguards like that's not the like you you could have just cut that out and that wouldn't have made your uh point worse or like we Continue, continue. Young kids. Hi there. Who's made many really creepy videos. The Jeffrey seems like a very nice person. I... Like... You, you showed the part where he said, have the parents watch it. Like... That's, that's a child... That's ask your parents' permission for going online. Like, what? All right, well, that is my bad. I, I am unfamiliar with Jeffrey's work. Um, I will be sure to use they, them. <coughs> Encouraging of young people to turn away from those who, in most cases and for all their faults, do love them and truly believe they have their best interests at heart. Note that I am being tentative in my language here because I do know there are exceptions and some families are terrible and I can well imagine them driving their children into the gender cult or any other cult to escape them. But encouraging young people to turn away from any kind of family... Good. So, so let me get this straight. Bad parents will drive kids into the gender cult, but then good parents will have their kids taken away from them by the gender cult. So there's there's no case where bad parents are the ones being dicks, huh? Okay. Or bad and find replacement relationships and families in people who don't really love them or care about them at all is typical of real cults and it's one of the similarities the gender cult has with real cults. And I want to make a special mention of the effing teachers who think they are entitled to override parental responsibility. Not Oh, this is just like going down the list. It's just malting about everything. Learn truth. Yeah, no, they, they uh, the teachers do because guess what? A lot of teachers have closer relationships with their students than their parents do. <clears throat> And in a place that would be a bad, bad house for kids, they might need another outlet, a place to be themselves, like a school where teachers can help keep them safe so that their kids don't get beaten by, like, an abusive parent or something. Like, again, you, you, these people try and say they care about kids, but at every turn, they're... 
are so many different ways that the examples they give could go bad for kids. Continue. Sorry, continue. For any legitimate reason, not because they suspect a child is being abused or neglected or anything to do with safeguarding, but because a child has decided that he or she is transgender. Here's just one example, which even goes against the directions of their own boss, the head teacher. And we recently had this nutty um, woman teacher. It was widely reported, misreported, I should say, as there being a child who was allowed to identify as a cat. Weird that this story keeps coming up. Thank you again, Libs of TikTok, for just spreading the shit all over the place. Amp262, thank you for following. Cat at school. I understand that was fake news when the story should have been about the ridiculous misinformation the teacher is putting out and the manner in which he spoke to a couple of 13 year old girls. One of them recorded about three or four minutes of the conversation and I have heavily edited it to just highlight the worst of what the teacher says. The one you get is so different as only two genders. I can say opinion. It yeah. is not an opinion. Gender is not linked to do with the not linked there to the parts gender. that you were born. So it's it's <laughs> oh no a teacher teaching children aghast gender is about how you identify I don't agree with that so why should I have to listen I just don't agree with that so it, it's these shitty kids who probably have turf parents and they're trying to get into this like grifting sphere early cool biological biological sex there is actually Hi Joe Dax. Yeah, this is the last thing we're looking at. You can be born with male and female body parts or hormones. In terms of gender, there are lots of genders. If you are talking about the fact that cisgender is the, the norm, that you identify with the gender, that with the sexual order that you're born with, yeah. or you're weird, that's yeah. basically what you're saying, yeah. which is really despicable. And why do you Yeah. So the child is literally discriminating here openly and the teacher is reprimanding them for that and correcting them i don't i don't see i literally don't see anything wrong like what do you want from me i think we have so many problems in the world with homophobia i'm fine with lesbians and gay people Same. i've got nothing against them <laughs> oh this is this is literally just like british turf rhetoric like they, this girl might as well be her daughter i wouldn't be surprised if she was a link between it, and you're how? saying that people can't that change. No, they who can't. They, want to be. they can't. Then, because you've got those genes. How you identify? Oh, how you identify? It. Yeah, it's not an opinion. Yes, it is. Yes, school. it is. No, it's not. And if you don't like it, you need to go to a different school. So I I, I'm reporting school. you to Miss Willis. You need to have a proper educational conversation about edu about equality, diversity, and inclusion. Oh, I because I'm not that. having that expressed in my letter. So, <laughs> God, you re she really thinks she did something here. Like, damn, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good, uh, good shutdown on the, on the, on the teacher's part. How is it even possible for a teacher to be teaching that there are three sexes and lots of genders and you can change who you are? I do want to keep off. Again, you're. You're just, you're so close to getting it. How is it even possible for the people who know things to be teaching these things? You're, oh, just, mm. Gender ideology itself in this video as, as far as I can, and focus on the slavish adherence to it as exemplified by this woman. The way she was rebuking the girls in such a nasty and intolerant manner, calling their opinions, which were based on truth, despicable, and saying they should find another school. That's not what she said. She said that right after she said that something about you call, like you think other people are being weird. And they're like, yeah, they are. It's like that. Yeah, they're being exclusionary. And why didn't you, now this makes me question why you didn't play the whole thing. Because there's a lot of context missing from this that I feel would be important. This is something that when I'm cutting videos, and I'm cutting, and it's why some of my clips can run long sometimes, especially in videos like when I did the um, the Matt Walsh video. 
is it can run long sometimes because I want to make sure the the context is in there to the best of my ability. Like even if it's not 10 minutes, like I can I can cut around it a little bit so that it's not just here's the part that makes them look bad, but you have everything up to that. That would be valuable here because I seriously doubt everything that they're saying. and that she wouldn't have them expressing a contrary view to her own sacred nonsense in her lesson that that's not what it and again it sounded more like they were making fun of a trans student like the way the teacher was defending like that sounds like there was a trans student in the class and these kids like it was a project or something and like i i can't even imagine what happened because I don't have the context. But yeah, like I. It's not education. No, it isn't. That <laughs> is a cult. Now, I know not... I've talked about Benji before. She's one of the young women who appears in. Oh my God. She actually has the book. She's just had it this whole time. What did I say like 20 minutes ago? Like 20 minutes ago, I said, we're going to get Abigail Schreier brought up at some point. I didn't think she would literally bring it up out of frame. Oh my God. Oh, could you be any more of a stereotype? Just no original thoughts in the head. Okay. Abigail Schreier's book, who was under immense academic pressure at home from her demanding parents who had an unhappy marriage and seemed to take it out on their daughters. She was persuaded by the video accounts made. And here we go with uh, abused kids always turn gay and queer. Cool, 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 cool. By trans identifying influencers that she- I know, Kitsana, I, you know what? I have a, I wish I could say it's just because I'm so damn good, which like, let's be honest, I kind of am, but it's more that so many of these people, and whether it's in the kind of nerd grifting spaces like the quartering, uh, these turf circles, the more mainstream political conservative spaces, they all run in circular arguments. Like, and and once you've heard all of them enough, you know where the others are gonna are gonna lead to. You just do. And it it's not. <laughs> Those arguments are never leading to, oh, let's look up, here's this new research I found. It's, here's what other people have said, and I'm going to keep regurgitating that. She was trans herself. All right, I'm going to go Philip Godzilla and she again. she set up her first Tumblr account and quietly announced herself as trans to viewers. She wasn't sure anyone would take notice. To her surprise, she received an overwhelming love bombing from strangers those are her words and they were telling her how brave she was and asking how they could help her she says there's just so much positive reinforcement that there's just no room at all for any criticism or any thought that something bad could be happening well and that is a problem i could i could definitely see you know not to play devil's advocate or anything I could definitely see that being a problem, especially if you are meeting something like transition with trepidation, being met with that overwhelming positivity. Yeah, that could be hard, but that's also, um, I think that's a problem with being too online. Like, I don't think anybody should only have friends online. I don't think anybody should just listen to people online. Like at a, at a certain point, you are indoctrinating yourself and you, you're going into a friendly place. And of course, you're going to get encouragement there. Like, I don't, I don't know what else you're, you're expecting. Fill the lizard. <laughs> you're cute. Yes, love bombing is a particularly strong feature of 
um, deliberate cults and the gender cult. I've shown examples of this in previous videos. Here's a bit of a recent video I made. I'm a guy. What? Yendo, it's really um, isolating being online all the time. It really is. Like, I... COVID has created this... And I think COVID really exacerbated a lot of problems that were already there with social media and parasocial relationships and how we relate to one another. But people forget so easily that the internet is not real life. And I think I think people like this, like TERFs and <coughs> people who are... always online and always in these circles and this is where you see people self-indoctrinate and get into QAnon and anti-vax and like all of these crazy movements and people can lose themselves in there and and forget that like that's not how people are in the real world like like th there is and you see it on twitter a lot but there is a contingent of people right now who truly believe, deeply believe, honestly, that all trans people are, are groomers and pedophiles. That Mexicans are flooding over the border in, in droves of hundreds and thousands. And there's also Chinese people in there who are, who are coming to take over our Waffle Houses. Who, who really believe that Hamas has agents in America. Like, the, these are beliefs that are growing larger and larger in scope. And it's because people aren't going out into the real world. They aren't actually talking with other people. They are just relating to others through social media, through this lens that is constantly bombarding them with everything to get their attention, to get their money, to get their allegiance. <clears throat> and I mean, and you, we saw that a lot. That, that was 90% of what my uh, CPAC video was about. And it's just like, it, we, we as, a, as a culture, we are so inundated with knowledge all the time. And not even knowledge. We're so inundated with just stuff, content, things. And it's really sad when you think about, and again, going into talking about what I really hope to achieve with doing any of this stuff, is to show that you can just look stuff up, that knowledge is just out there and it's free. If you don't have a phone, you can go to a public library. Like, you can find the answers to any question you might have if you put the work into actually finding them. And so many people don't want to do that. And I think that's really what causes these kind of these kind of terminal issues anyway here's a <coughs> looks like a trans teenager and i'm going to go by theo yeah. i'm look i'm very happy for you but um A trans mask going by Theo is like a, a trans femme going by Autumn. Like, I, I'm just saying pick a, pick a, pick a name, pick a different name, please. I'm just saying. That is, you know what, Thumb Warrior, that's actually true. Um, cause I still haven't picked a name. So I, I shouldn't, and never mind. I shouldn't be talking. I'm, I've been waffling on a name for like three years. I called my mom today and I was afraid I was going to get thrown out of the house. We love you, Theo. It just. So again, you're showing something that makes your side look bad. You're, you're asking, 
Why are these kids getting so much support uncritically? And when he, when he says, I told my mom today I was afraid of getting thrown out of the house. That's why people want support and people give support. Are you, man. Beggars belief, but. You can imagine how Theo must feel getting all that love and admiration and validation, especially if she's actually a lesbian at a time when lesbianism is apparently considered uncool by many young people, unless it's straight men laughing as women. <laughs> there has never been a better time to be a lesbian. Are you kidding me? There are literal, like... Hollywood films in theaters. There have been two films about lesbians in the last couple months. Hollywood films. Big stars. Big casts. Like, it's uncool to be a lesbian. Give me a fucking break. It, it, and again, note how you completely roll over the idea of she... Like, she just totally ignored that he said, my mom, I was worried about throwing me out of the house. Like, what? What? Even the gays don't hate lesbians anymore. It's, <clears throat> am I straight? Am I a gay? <laughs> the DJP. Lesbianism is proper cool right now. Like, absolutely mega. You sound like, um, I, I don't know, just the way the DJP, the way that was worded sounded like, a early 90s cyberpunk depiction of what kids talk like in 2007. Like, being lesbian is totally cool right now. Like, absolutely mega. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but no, like, it's, it's very... Like, not as if it's a, a fad or anything, because people are going to be... People are going to be who they're going to be, but like, it is not nearly as bad as it's been for gay and lesbian people in the past. It's uncool to be a lesbian straight lady. I don't know if she's straight. Anxiety, depression, is on the autism spectrum or suffers any kind of disadvantage that affects her self-esteem. In my summer look video, I also showed how all someone commenting beneath his video had to do was announce she's realized she's a guy to have other commenters, people who know nothing about her at all, start love bombing her. And just look at... Wait, Yenzo, Dead Domain needs to get a screenshot of her face. What do you, who, whose face? But like, you, you also don't know anything about that person. But a few of the responses to this woman's announcement. I support you. You're an amazing, handsome man. Well, that's obvious from the photo. God made you a beautiful boy, and whoever says otherwise is dumb, ba -ba -ba -ba, says the person who writes like an overexcited 12-year-old. Some seen Catholic. Um, like, I, <laughs> I have a hard time. Again, you've completely, your, your point has been undone by the fact that you keep showing people and the need for for this kind of support. Also, yeah, I don't know why the jump cut. Why well, are we God suddenly... God bless you, Kevin. Good job discovering how he made you. What's this? Gender ideology meets young earth creationism. I wish that's... you luck on your journey. And of course, I'll pray for you. Well, that's jolly nice of you. Good luck on your journey, dude. I hope you find your happiness being your authentic self. We're so... Like, here's the thing. Like, just so... They can't help but snicker and sneer and like, like, at people offering sincere thoughts of support to a stranger. Like, th th this is the equivalent 
of seeing somebody on the street and being like, hey, good for you. Like, oh my gosh, I just won the lottery. And somebody's walking by like, yeah, you know what? Good for you. And these people are like, why would you do that? Why why would you wish somebody well for their day? Oh, it's like, because it's, it's polite. It's nice to let somebody know you support them. Like, what is your, why are you so mad about this? Cartoonishly, I am not nice. With our full heart. Sending you strength, my dude. It's not easy to be trans right now. Not easy. It's never been easier. That's why you're all doing it. My God. <laughs> not easy. It's never been easier, says the people who are like actively trying to legislate trans people out of existence. Spreading ideas about them being a cult. Oh yeah, it's so, it's so easy. Look at all these people who think you're a cult. And they can't actually define cult. What are you talking about? But it's better than pretending to be ordinary and not self-obsessed and attention-seeking. <laughs> That's another very funny thing is that, like, just because you take authorship over your appearance, how you present, who you are, you, you have to be attention-seeking. Like, trans people might not fit in with the rest of the group, but guess what? Not everybody does. Like, sorry, not everybody wants to be a gray drab work drone like you. Like, that doesn't make somebody narcissistic. Narcissism, like grooming, another word so that has been just like you. kind of and entirely so disambiguated by these conversations. What bombing looks like in the internet age. It's so bizarre. No Your editing technique is so bizarre. Why did you go to your bathroom for that? Nobody, that is so not weird. Not a single one of them questioned her, said, well, that's a strange thing to think. What is it that makes you think so? It was all... Yeah, because that would be rude as shit. And I she, I know she's trying to depict it as like the, the gender criticals would just be, they would just ask nice questions and they would just be like, mm, yes, well, this is a weird thing to think. And have you really thought this through? They wouldn't. The gender critical people would say, you'll never be a man. You'll die as a woman. Like they would resort to the most cruel infantile tactics they could possibly find. May her crumpets always be dry. Oh, oh, that's so cool. We love you. And even this is God's plan. The opposite of love bombing, I'm not sure if it's called hate bombing, but that fits well enough, is also a huge part of being in a cult. And the gender cult is no exception. In the recent video I did on detransition. And you know, all those famous cults, what send Twitter messages. And regret, which is where the clip of Theo I just showed comes from, by the way. I gave some examples of how nastily they treat detransitioners and de sisters. Here's another one. There's this little lass who was at Kelly J's um, Let Women Speak event in Glasgow. So I was in the trans community from the ages of 12 to 19. Oh. I have since detransitioned, and everyone I had ever been friends with. I oh, is that a Welsh accent? Oh. I do really like Welsh accents. I had ever known and I had ever thought loved me has left me. Yeah. If you look over there, you'll see everyone. You, they look so confused and so indoctrinated and truly. How does one look confused? This is another thing I love when, when people do this. Matt Walsh does this a lot where he will look at somebody and be like, yeah, they just look so miserable and, and they have no light in their eyes. And they just, uh, people on the right do this all the time. It's like, again, they can't, they can't actually come up with a real argument, so they just go, well, look at them. Obviously, they're unhappy <laughs> with having to completely reform their bodies by, by sheer force of will, becoming who they want to be, becoming who they feel is most true to themselves. Look at how unhappy they are. Unlike me, somebody who can't do that. Who doesn't want to do that? Yeah, exactly. Thumb warrior, tra detransitioners are only treated badly by trans people when they're incredibly transphobic. Yeah, when detransitioners use their personal experiences, and I talked about this in my detrans video. <clears throat> when they use their experiences to just attack others and others' rights and ability <laughs> to transition. It's like... Just because something isn't for you doesn't mean it's for nobody. Inferno Punch, thank you very much for following. They are. They have no idea that the second that they question that, they, they'll be thrown away like 
rubbish. They are nothing. They are... You can throw them away just as easily as you got them. Those people that are willing to let them cut themselves up to feel whole again, they don't love them. Yeah. They... This seems <coughs> certainly not ideologically motivated. Like, it, it, again, she started out by saying that all of her trans friends have left her, but then she's going into a tirade about how they just want to cut people up. It's like, I wonder why your trans friends might not want to hear that. Hmm. Normal people don't abandon friends because they've changed their mind about how... Normal people do abandon friends if those friends are constantly telling you, oh, you're just doing this for attention and you're just, uh, it's just a phase for you and you're, you're just trying to chop yourself up and to, to make yourself feel better. It's like, yeah, that's not a friend. That's just a dick. I wouldn't be friends with somebody like that. How they want to live their own lives as long as they're not choosing to do anything weird or harmful. Only a cult sees someone deciding they're not trans after all as harmful, and they do see it as harmful because it undermines what they claim is true, what they want people to believe, which is that some people are trans just as some people are gay, it's innate, and people know who they are from even the earliest God, age. She's and it's so... not just. Like watch her what they want people to believe look at her her face in this again like she is just so unpleasant which is that some people are trans just as some people are gay it's innate and people know who they are from even the earliest age and it's not just the transitioners of course it's those people who still call themselves trans but who don't like, go along people with know the worst who the they are and are therefore called quizlings not just traitors but quizlings as in the uh, norwegian guy the nazi collaborator whose name gave rise to the term it tends to be the same names that keep coming up caitlin jenner blair white and buck angel this guy thinks that the american conservative commentator michael knowles and his fellow nazis are going to murder them presumably because knowles said he wants to see transgenderism ir now again at the beginning, she very heavily hammered on the idea that trans people are always the violent ones. It's great that she's actually showing, and I'm sure she, she won't show the actual footage of Michael Knowles um, saying that trans people, transgender ideology should be eradicated at every level, is what he said eradicated from public life. I think it was a daft thing to say. He handed the cult a stick to beat him with, more fool him. As well as those, there's Debbie Hayton and Rose of Dawn, who are transphobic quizzlings. How can you be transphobic when you call yourself a trans person? What this tells us is just how the word transphobia means disagreement with the ideology, nothing to do with an irrational fear. Or you. This is like the exact same thing as saying, how can you hate black people but you're black how can you hate asian people but you're asian it's like you can you can have deep-seated either self-loathing or loathing for others like you can try and set yourself apart from a group that you're a part of because you think being associated with them is a bad thing like that's that's like Candace Owens' entire thing. Like, she has spent so long just talking about how, like, bad black crime rates are. Mighty Mulatto, $2. Thank you. Uh, wasn't the clitorectomy cultural thing? What? I don't... Clitorect... What is a clitorectomy? Or yeah, no. Self-hating gay men. Makuta LaRocca. Fantastic example. Self-hating gay men. I had... Some experiences with some of them uh, at CPAC. Like, you can absolutely be in a part of a group that is opposed to that group. Which is what a phobia actually is. Also, Miranda Yardley, Fionn Orlander, and whomever the other Quislings du jour are. 
Again, Dead- Again, I have no idea who all of these people are. B. Hayton and Christina Harrison, who campaign against legal reform to the Gender Recognition Act, are quizzling hams who rely on praise from extremist turfs. It's just so irrational. Why would they choose to do the more difficult thing if they didn't genuinely believe it, when it would have been easier just to go along with and get respect from the cult? From the cult. I don't know, honestly. Um, we talked about Pearl Davis at the beginning of the stream. Pearl Davis is maybe one of the most self-loathing people I've ever seen. And in previous streams and in previous videos, she has talked about how she had deep-seated body image issues all through high school and how she's always seen herself as like loathsome and not worth loving and not worth caring about and stuff like that. Like that's, those are her self-image issues. And I don't know Pearl personally, but if I had to bet dollars to donuts, that probably has something to do with the way that she advocates against women having the right to vote and men being in charge of everything. Like, I'm willing to bet those two things are connected. Why would a woman advocate against women's right to vote? I I don't know. I I wouldn't do that if I were in her position. But she's doing it. And also, it seems to be profitable for her. So, you know. I don't know about uh, it pays more to be on the right. It does pay. It does pay. And this is one about seven hex. Anyone who still calls themselves a transsexual is a quizzling who sides with our oppressors for head pats and table scraps from the high table. And their opinion on what is or isn't transphobic is to be laughed at and dismissed. What? He's guilty of some great betrayal for preferring to call himself transsexual after having had genital surgery. Why? That's um, Seven Hex a couple of years ago, by the way, begging for table scraps from one of his oppressors. He's the one in pink. That's you. That's you. What? This is cult-like control of what people are allowed to think and say and do. And if they don't toe the line, they're quizlings. And these quizlings certainly don't walk in lockstep with each other. They have a variety of political opinions and views about transgenderism. So far as I know, the one thing they have in common is that they don't deny biology. They don't deny their actual sex. They are all open about the fact that they are male or female in Buck Angel's case. And that makes them the worst kind of cult traitor because Trans women are women, no debate. The whole no debate meme is very cultish. The objective here is literally everything. <coughs> First off, everything she is picking as, as examples of why it's a cult are things that she's literally cherry picking from just random ass accounts and things that apply to the gender critical movement broadly as a whole to achieve acceptance of an unsupportable belief by discouraging questions. That's what cults do, that's what the gender cult does. But why no debate? They never give a reason for why somebody's claimed identity can't be questioned. What is so sacred about identity that you can't question it? A person's identity and who they are is never up for debate, like ever. What they say or what they mean when they're saying that, which again, of course, they're going to take this out of context as much as they can. What they mean when they say that is that it's not a matter. If somebody says, hey, my pronouns are this, it's not a matter of discussion. You don't get to have a public forum there. If you're at a restaurant with somebody or you're introduced to a coworker and the coworker says, hey, my pronouns are they, them. You don't get to have a debate on that. You, you need to respect that person. That's what they're saying there. People like Jermaine Gray made good Oh, okay, Mighty Mulatto. I get what you're saying. Yes, $5 for Mighty Mulatto. You didn't need to do another five. Um, thank you. A surgery procedure to make a woman more faithful. Point being, surgery was okay to uh, enforce the preferred paradigm. Yes. Progress with feminism, mm -hmm. but her feminism has stopped at a point where it's not willing to accept that trans women are women, and that's the problem. Why must there be no debate? We know why. It's because they can't debate it. Many of them are so brainwashed. They don't really... No, they, I mean, they can. You you wouldn't listen to it. You would, you would make any excuse. Like, many of these things are pretty easy to debate. Um, 
yeah, an entropy fan, excuse me, sorry, an entropy fan, what they mean by that is that they want to be arseholes and harass people. Uh, Sane Turing, complete humans understand that if someone expresses an internal sense of self, you generally accept it. Yeah, I, I trust somebody else to know themselves better than I know them. Generally. Odds are, unless it's higher Rijic, and I, I genuinely don't think she has an internal monologue. I like, I seriously think that higher Rijic's brain is just like radio static and tumbleweeds. Realize that it's even possible to debate it. They don't realize it's an ideology. They have somehow managed to convince themselves that they are talking facts, and all they need to do is state them. This seems like a great form to have an engaging conversation in. I love my my favorite subgenre of conservative uh, debate is when they have to go find a college student who's not prepared to debate them on the like that that shit always bugs me because it it makes like by default if a kid walks away a kids like I'm not fucking dealing with this by default it makes them look bad but it's not like who cares. Typically, a cultist believes that those they refer to as trans women are women, trans men are men, because of their brains. They'll say this is the scientific and medical consensus. It certainly is not. Therefore, trans women are not a threat to actual women, and they should use the spaces they feel comfortable in, regardless of how other users, actual women, feel. And this is what matters, because you can believe whatever nonsense you like if it causes no problems to anyone else. And of course, if you disagree with them, even if you provide evidence that quite explicitly contradicts what they say, then you're a bigot and a transphobe. But it doesn't matter what evidence we provide of either sexual violence. I believe is uh, Bryson, I think that's, I believe she transitioned after I, I might have to look that one up. ...or just violence of some trans-identifying men, whether in women's spaces or not. Wait, 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 hold on. That last one. You went over that one real quick. ...of either sexual violence or just violence. Triggering violent protests from Antifa goons who branded allegations a hoax. Notice how she's not showing... The, I don't know what reputable publication would use the terms Antifa goons. ...of hmm. some trans-identifying men, whether in women's spaces also you're showing... or not. You're, you're talking about four different examples across the entire world this isn't like in a it's town off a duck's back to the cultists they may deny it or gaslight us they'll accuse us of judging all trans identifying people by the actions of a few no matter how many yes you you literally are do you do you want to go into straight people who have molested and groomed kids like yeah you are Le I hate this shit. I hate everybody who fucking does this shit. Many times we say the problem is that they are men. Minority of all men are predatory, are abusive, regardless of what they call themselves, and trans-identifying men are no exception. But the cultists just don't care. They don't care. It's like they have lost touch with their humanity. Nothing you say penetrates. The treatment of all of us who dare... 
questionable uh, to wording. publicly oppose gender ideology is really quite extraordinary, quite unlike anything that has been seen before in modern liberal de democracies. The lengths they will go to to try to shut us up. I mean, they have no conscience about causing people to lose their livelihoods. Of course, the more famous one is, the more opprobrium they attract. Thankfully, they are never going to be able to ruin J.K. Rowling, but they would if they could. And for what? For daring to express an opinion they don't like. For being a bitch. Like, but one that is based on biological truth and actual experience of women. Davina McCall is the latest big celebrity target for having the temerity to recommend a series of podcasted interviews of J.K. Rowling by Megan Phelps Roper. Her offending tweet was actually a response to Buck Angel, who recommended the podcasts. Davina, who, by the way, is an extremely famous and popular TV star, a household name in the UK, she responded to Buck Angel by agreeing with Buck's view of the podcast. The condemnation was instant. Of course, she was called a transphobic bigger and all the usual stuff, but even the mildest comments were from people not calling her nasty names, but just expressing their deep disappointment. How weird, disappointment in what? That Davina was brave enough to say she liked a podcast involving- Yeah, okay, I am I think I'm done with this. Um, And if you couldn't tell, my voice is actually going out too, so. I need to get going. I should probably get some food. Um, thank you, everybody, who has stuck with me through all my bizarre tangents. Um, we're going to do a raid on actual Jake. He's he's going over actually a very fascinating story that he and his wife have been fending off this one YouTube chud for days on Twitter. Go uh, Go check it out. Go give Jake some love. And I will see y'all relatively soon. Have a good rest of your night.